Today is Friday, October 27th, 2023, and you're listening to the Ask a Christian podcast. I'm your host, Nate. Today is Friday fun day. That's what Fridays have, for whatever reason, turned into, seemingly. So, um, there's not a lot of deep theology, except to John the Baptist top topic. People go pretty deep into that one. But uh, besides that, it's, it's a fun day. We bring some uh, some of our favorite heretics up, uh, Bob and Baptize, the Unitarians or whatever Baptize is. Um, not Christian. Anyway, so uh, give a disclaimer because it's important. I don't want people spewing heresy on our stage, but uh, sometimes, you know, we, we let our hair down and just uh, shoot the breeze and whatever. Anyway, today is one such day. So we start with a little movie trivia about Carrie, the, the scary movie from back in the day, um, which I know little to nothing about because I didn't see it like a good Christian boy. Um, anyway, <laughs> then we get into... <laughs> A Dungeons & Dragons adventure in which one of the actual players playing the game um, says they have an attraction to their dog and they are autistic. So we explore with our mental, mental health professionals whether uh, there is any uh, over overreach or overlap from someone diagnosed with autism versus bestiality. Why do we need to have this conversation? Well, I guess because it's an issue. Um, anyways, this is why people need Jesus. So, anyways, although we do have a couple people licensed as mental health professionals who do weigh in on the subject, do not take medical advice from us. This is Ask a Christian. We answer theological ah, theological questions as biblically accurate as we can. We are not medical doctors, nor do we give medical advice. Goodness. The fact that we even have to say things like that. Uh, anyway, so there's your disclaimer. Uh, Bestiality is bad. Don't do it. Seek help. Uh, then charismatic praise and worship. What is charismatic praise and worship? We talk about that. And then we get into John the Baptist and, and quite a few questions around that, and it's a really insightful and good discussion. And then we have the Bob and Baptized show, where they each uh, counter one heresy with another. <laughs> so that's fun for a while, I guess. Um, everyone have fun. Enjoy this discussion. Hey, at least no one yells and screams at each other today. Except Baptized is kind of old and cranky sometimes. Um, read the Ask a Christian book on Amazon if you'd like. Learn all about having civil discussions with sometimes less than civil people. Also, you can check out the Ask a Christian store, grab a t-shirt, grab a coffee cup, grab a dog sweater or mouse pad, and support this podcast sharing the gospel with people on the internet. And by the way, if anyone forgot, the gospel is, there is one God, the God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He created everything that's been created, everything in existence. Jesus is God. Jesus has always existed. Uh, something like 2,020 years ago, Jesus, who has always existed, came from heaven, took bodily form on earth, was born, lived a perfect, sinless life, offered himself as a sacrifice to redeem mankind from their sins. Anything that falls short of God's standard is imperfection. That is sin. Anything God says don't do and we do, that's sin. So if you're not perfect, which no one is, you've sinned. Uh, Jesus is the only one that's perfect, being God himself. Fully God, fully man. Anyway, he let himself be murdered as a sacrifice, rose from the dead, and says, if you believe that, if you confess Jesus as Lord, ask him to save you, forgive you, give you eternal life, you must be born again. Ask Jesus to make you born again, to make your dead spirit come alive, and you are saved. That's the gospel. If you haven't heard it, now you have. If you haven't done it, do it. That's what all this is about. Everything else is just bonus on top. Um, the funny stuff, the banter, the other theology, the, the deeper doctrines, you should get there, but that's not important the most important what's well, important but the most important thing is you know it's like most other philosophies in religion you start at ground zero and then you build your way up to the culmination with christianity what i just said the gospel is that's it that is the culmination that's the biggest prize you can win right there that's the meaning of life that's everything that's your eternal life so then everything else you learn is nothing's going to be as important as the gospel that gives you eternal life but everything else is surely important um the doctrines the theology but it's just bonuses on top of that. So step one is the greatest ultimate step you can take. Steps two, three, four, five, six thousand. Um, it's important, but it's just bonuses. So anyways, have an awesome weekend. We'll see you later. Uh, Francis, good morning. Are we ever going to hear that topic you had like two weeks ago when you said I have a topic? <laughs> Otherwise, Chris, you should totally suggest... Uh, on, on that construction, the, what did you say, a counseling wing? Suggest a sin closet. Totally. Yeah, I mean. Is this yeah. a closet where you confess your sins or a closet where you go to sin? I, oh, wow, that's, that's scary. Um, 
I, I was thinking it's like when you sin, you're like, you know, as a, as a kid, if you sin, your parents like lock you in it. So you learn your lesson. Oh, so neither. So like a Carrie situation, something from like the Carrie movie. Okay. I never saw Carrie, but I think I can imagine what you're talking about from Carrie. Did her parents do something like that? Like lock her in a room or something? I mean, it's, yep. Yep. With crosses all over it and, you know, cause of course she can move things with her mind. So she oh. was like spawn of Satan is what her mom thought. But then her mom was not, not legit. Her mom was weird. Wait, well, Carrie was crazy, right? Like the kid was. Well, she was person. just, she was socially inept. Most of the movies show her sort of like socially inept just because her mom always kept her isolated. Right. I think it's like a push. I mean, if I was going to be like, do some kind of like in depth, like sort of, uh, what is it? Formal formalist analysis. I would say this movie is probably like some critique of religion, modern religion or Christianity, not unlike a bunch of other stuff, which always portrays Christians as like weird cultic. You believe in some strange stuff. Um, you know, because they don't want to let their kids go drink alcohol and party all day, so they must be weird, you know? Um, okay, this is getting too deep. Like, th- I-, I thought the point was Carrie was, like, evil and, like, murdering people because she was, like, covered in blood and stuff. It, well, have I got her all because, wrong? No, she, so, she, oh, does, she does that, but see, the point is that she's After not, she gets pushed too far or something? After she gets pushed too far, she's, like, super bullied. She's super. She's covered in blood because people dump pig blood on her. They invite her to a prom. They, like... <laughs> pay the the super handsome like charming jock guy to like fake like he's interested in her and pick her up and all those different things they pick her up for prom and it's this elaborate scheme by the popular kids to utterly humiliate this girl so they they make her prom queen she's on stage and when she gets on stage they dump legit pig's blood all over her so like she's all that type thing but with satan and blood yes and so they do that to her (laughs) <laughs> and she has these, like, whatever, like, telekinetic abilities, but they're, like, lying dormant, and she's just, like, this quirky kid that doesn't say anything and everybody thinks it's weird. So they dump blood on her, and that's when she snaps. She, like, loses it, and then, you know, all hell breaks loose is the point. But sort of, it's like this push, like, towards the reason she's not socially yet is because her crazy Christian mom... Or like religious fanatics. Ability. Yes, religious fanatics kept her in her, her closet, locked her up, didn't do the basic things like teach her about her menstrual cycle. So when she gets it at school, she thinks she's dying and all the other kids are like, it's just this regular thing that happens every month. And that's why they do the blood. Because it's like, oh, hey, you know, this other thing happened. So now I basically told the movie to you. But yeah. See, Francis, I asked for a topic and you uh, didn't pipe up. So this is what you get. Yeah, you get pig's blood. It was great. <laughs> this is Nate's dream. I mean, I thought it was just a Halloween thing. Like, I got I got the wolves tied up in the back for the sacrifices, but, I mean, that was a little early Halloween surprise I wasn't expecting. Yeah, well, muzzle top. Just kidding. The official position of asking Christians don't sacrifice wolves on Halloween. Um... I don't know where else to go. That was a real a weird way to start the room. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> huh let's we, see. We specialize in weird around here. Yeah, it's kind right, of a I, thing. <laughs> I could just see someone popping on the replay and being like, I thought this was a Christian room, but then I walked in and the moderator was talking about sacrificing wolves on Halloween and he's, you know, in preparation, so I don't know I don't know what's going on in that room. Like, I wonder if they're talking about forgiveness. Pig's blood. Oh, let's let's skip a little bit. Uh, sacrificing wolves. I feel like... <laughs> well, uh, um, that escalated quickly. Well, the only topic I have is is actually way worse than what we've been talking about. It, it was a conversation I had last night, which just instantly made me think of, like, you know, the depravity of man. Chris, maybe maybe the universe or God is trying to tell me something. Like, I can't get away from it. <laughs> like, yeah, the depravity of man thing. I don't know. Do you want to go there? Here's your choice. That's all you get. Do you want to have, do you want to hear about my disturbing more than this conversation conversation last night? Or, uh, yeah. 
or, or dial it back in a more holy way. I mean, either way, you know, I'm, I'm game for whatever, you know. Like, All right. I really wanted to wait for Steph, but, you know, who knows if she'll ever be here. Um, okay, so I am part of this Discord server that is a video game community. So um, I don't really know anyone well. I just know like four or five people that I routinely play games with. And, you know, I, I mean, I only know them as well as I do in the video game, right? So it's usually like, shoot that guy, kill that goblin, something like that. Like, I, I don't know them personally. Anyway, there um, some some guys left and, like, quit the game because, you know, work or some lame excuse like that. So um, we have had openings. Well, for the last, like, three weeks, there's been this new guy, and we, we didn't have a large selection of people. So right from the beginning, this guy just kind of pops up. And he's like, hey, are you accepting new players? And everyone's like, uh, well, yeah, okay, sure, jump on in. So anyway, he's been a little off uh, since we very first met him. And he'll just randomly do things that don't match up. Anyway, so we're like, okay, clearly the guy's got something going on, but fine. Um, you know, we're trying to be polite, not rude. Well, anyway, last night... He uh, <laughs> he starts talking while we're waiting to start the game. He starts talking about um, if anyone has dog training advice because he's trying to, you know, he, he can't get his dog to start barking at other dogs and being aggressive and stuff like that. So I'm like, you know, I'm leading with my spiel. I'm just like so excited. I'm like, oh, the dog whisperer. I'm like, watch all the seasons, watch dog whisperer. And as I'm talking about that, thinking I'm giving like very helpful advice and everyone else is also trying to give helpful advice for dog training, right? Um Anyway, then this guy goes like way 90 degrees or like 180 degrees or like 180 degrees straight down. I don't know. And he's like, um, you know, I don't know if it's weird, but, you know, my, my dog, it's I'm like, what kind of dog do you have? And I'm like, and, and he's like, um, it's a blue nose pit. And like, you know, she's she's really cool looking. You know, she's all like shiny and like a really cool, like prize dog, blah, blah, blah. And then he's like, I don't know if it's weird, but uh, I mean, you know, she's kind of like, well, she's a girl dog. Right. And I'm like. Uh oh, red flag. <laughs> and he's like, and the way he, he talks, I, I, I don't even know. I, I wish you guys would relive my experience. Yeah, Marquise, yeah, you know where it's going. Anyway, he's like, what's well, a, it's a girl dog. And, you know, I, I'm just kind of like, you know, I don't want you to think I'm weird, but attracted to it. And I'm, we're just like, whoa, 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 what, what, what? what? He's like, <clears throat> well, you know, I because it's a girl dog. I'm like, yeah, you keep saying that. Like, leave the dog alone. And anyway, so like, leave the dog alone. Like, you would normally think we're being trolled, but, you know, this guy's mannerism and stuff, like, clearly something is not all the way right with him. But anyways, he's like, well, you know, I have problems. Like, I'm autistic. And we're like, okay, okay, makes sense. I mean, sort of. Not the dog thing, but, like, why, why you know, we, we've pegged you as a little one of these things is not like the others. Um, we're like, oh, okay, okay. So I don't think we're being trolled. I think the guy legit has a thing for his dog in a very unhealthy way. So anyway... I wanted to ask Steph, since she has, you know, experience with, like, people on the spectrum. Um, yeah, I guess her insight, or anyone else's. Because on one hand, it's utter and total depravity. And on the other hand, is there any allowance for, like, wires that are not connected properly? I, I mean, no. I mean, the act is still disgusting. Um, anyway, that's my conversation, Chris. So you want to try to top that, or you want to speak to that? Leave the dog alone. Yeah, it's good. It's good. I got nothing. CEO, did you come to stage nothing. to give us some uh, advice or doctrines against bestiality? I'll go against. Good, I good morning, CEO. <laughs> Have that with your coffee. Morning. I mean, I don't know what else to say. I don't even know if there's a point in there other than the total depravity of man. And that happened when I'm trying to relax and, like, you know, kill some goblins. Um, so I'm just like, I, I was telling the Discord people last night, I'm like, guys, I've got, like, the topic, the, the wow topic for tomorrow. Not wow, like, deep, spiritually insightful, but just, like, I can't believe this conversation is really happening. And I really think it's legit, and we're not being trolled. And CEO has a lot of feedback. Oh, sorry. You ever see the movie The Animal? So basically, so basically, Nate, you're just wanting us to participate in your suffering. 
I mean, I don't know. I guess if I could have a takeaway, I was just going to bring up the depravity of man and say, Chris, I don't know. Maybe maybe half tongue, maybe like 70, 30 tongue in cheek. There's something to part of the tulip doctrine. <laughs> hey, good morning. Well, yeah, I mean, it's not, that's just the, hey, good morning, Devin. That's not the just, that's not the tulip doctrine. So both the remonstrants and the Calvinists believe in total depravity. They actually that's the one point they agree on. What's a remonstrant? The Arminians. Why did you say remonstrant? Is that like a German translation or is it slightly different? Oh, I've never no, heard that word. That's what they were called at the Council of Dort when all this nonsense got started. They called themselves the remonstrants. Why? No, it's a Dutch word, man. It was 1621. What do you want me to say? Well, I don't know. Like, I thought you were going to give us a history lesson. Like, oh, it, it means Arminian, but it just translated. Um, or like, no, it's it's actually like kind of like Arminian, but there's a subtle difference is why. Like, I, I don't know. I thought I was going to learn something. <laughs> he just wanted to show us how smart he is. Oh, no, it's just the remonstrants were like, <clears throat> that was their official name in the Council of Dort. They were followers of Jacob Arminius and... They wrote, after the Council of Dort ended in 1618, they wrote this, the principles of the remonstrants, um, and that was essentially, you know, the points of Arminianism laid out in the it's a document from 1629 or 21 called the, the Remonstrant Articles. I mean, is that enough information? I can go on. Sure. I was just wondering, like, why, you know, like, we hear the word Arminian, like, you know, multiple times a day, but not once in my life have I heard Remonstrant. Yeah, that was, like, their official historical name, but it kind of fell by the wayside because it's a weird Dutch word. I kind of like it. It kind of sounds insulting, right? Like, it sounds like an insult. Like, you dirty little remonstrant. It's what, like, you'd expect. Like, I'd expect someone to use it. Because it just has a sort of a harsh tone. A lot of, like, cacophony in there, you know? Remonstrant. I think it sounds like some kind of, of food. Like, maybe like a, I don't know, some kind of, I mean, it sounds like a like a schnitzel fritzen or something. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, the ironic bit of what Marquis just said is that the, the pejorative at the time was calling somebody an Arminian, and the proper term of respect was remonstrant. <laughs> so it's like exactly opposite. It's kind of funny. That's hilarious. Is there something like that for like Calvinists? Is there like another word for that? Or what? Who, what was John Calvin? Was he? What was his? It was, Johnny uh, Boys is what they. He called wasn't them. Dutch, right? So what was he? Was he like? Who John Calvin? John yeah. Calvin was French. Thank oh. you. They called them Johnny Boys. Uh, well, it, you know, it's, they were called Pauline. It's called Augustinian. You know, it's called the Doctrines of Grace by Jesus. You know. <laughs> see what you did there. You see what I did? <laughs> yeah, but like, so like. Depravity. Um. No one denies total depravity because to do that would mean that you yourself, it's just say like to deny total depravity means that you can work your own way to heaven with the work salvation. Like no one actually believes. I guess maybe it was just a better example of like, you know, cause when someone's like what you said, right. It's a very scholarly intellectual, like studious, thing right because it's like a it's like a doctrine made on a paper it's like total depravity it's like what does that mean it's like oh well you know you can't save yourself blah, 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 blah. but then when you think about like how actual depraved people can be it's like oh goodness <laughs> that, that takes on like a whole a whole new gravity and so it's like oh total depravity blah, 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 you can't save yourself it's like what does that mean oh here's some examples like good lord oh yeah i mean so what you're talking about is a, there's another theological term for that called utter depravity. That yeah, that sounds right. Absence. Yeah. So the absence of any good 
in a person and that's not that's not the doctrine so like people will say oh you calvinists believe in utter depravity not total depravity like you take it too far um you know and that's you know it's another it's another hay filled straw man get your uh, get your allergy medicine <laughs> I mean, it's like, you know, like we were, we were listening to a lecture last night and, um, there's actually, I'm going to send you this podcast, Nate. It's very long. I'm going to warn you right now. So do it in bits, but, um, but it's really good. And the guy is just, just talking, just like I'm talking right now. And he never raises his voice and he's just going through and he's laying out this logical case. And it is like the most logical, his, his, uh, is uh, apparently he's a friend of Matt Yester, who used to be on. I don't know what Pal Talk is. What is? Does anybody know what Pal Talk is? Is that like I have a no idea? Previous clubhouse. Okay. Anyway, so they used to have a thing called Pal Talk, like whatever, ten years ago, and this dude was on there all the time, kind of like we are doing now. But he wasn't as advanced as he was, and he's just a very well-read layman, and his thing is called the Consistent Calvinist, and it's. I mean, it was, it was fascinating. I was like, wow, I have never heard somebody start from point zero and just start walking through just logical points and then repeating those and adding stuff. And it was very good. I was like, wow, this is like super consistent. Like he's the consistent Calvinist. So it was like, wow, this is like really interesting. And there's no emotion to it. So you'd love it. He's, I mean, he's not robotic where you're going to fall asleep, but like, there's no nonsense and there's no hyperbole. It's just, here's the logic to all of these things. And it may be, it may be interesting to interact with and talk about. Sure. Send that on over. Um, Chris, I got a quick question for you. So Andrew on here says that he believes um, God knows everything we're going to do, but he also says he believes in libertarian free will. Is that compatible? <laughs> um, no. Uh, so what Andrew doesn't realize what he's doing is he is making God a contingent being upon his own creatures. And so... This is the reason that the idea of divine foreknowledge was dropped from Arminianism. So if you like listen to Leighton Flowers, who is the provisionist guy, he does not talk about divine foreknowledge in the same way that the remonstrants would because they realized that it was philosophically untenable. And the reason for that is that if, if free agents are making choices and God is decreeing things based on those choices, then God is dependent on that creature to make those choices in order for him to set forth his will. If God is dependent upon anybody or anything, he stops being God. And so that became the, the difficult part, you know, for them to work out. So there's, there's much more modern ways of talking about that that do not violate God's aseity uh, or his necessariness, but also preserve libertarian free will. So, so you can have people that are libertarian free will that also do not violate, you know, the, the creature, uh, creator distinction. Got it. Thanks. So, yeah, I mean, Leighton Flowers, Soteriology 101 is a very good example of how they work through this and how they've developed their theology, you know, realizing like the original theology was pretty, like, pretty kind of silly. But yeah, all right. <laughs> so yeah, Nate, I'll send that over to you. It's very, very interesting. But man, I was going to make some jokes and I held off and you, you would be proud of me if you knew the jokes that I was going to make when we were talking about the other, the other previous topic. I mean, Sorry, Chris, that would I actually probably be the perfect area. time for you to make those jokes. I just, thank you. Uh, just thanks, Chris. I was in a bad reception area. Thanks for answering my question. Sure. Um, 
you know, and from the Armenian perspective, again, check out Leighton Flowers from the Seems like Chris is also in a bad reception area. Well, we don't hear you, Chris. <clears throat> CEO, are you still in a bad reception area? I'm, a, I'm better now. Do you happen to have any other, uh, usually when you preface something, like I have a very simple, short question, and it leads to like, a 30 minute discussion? No, do you that have was any of literally one, it. Do you have any, of, any literally of those right now? It. No, that was literally it. Well, yeah, but that actually was a short and, short and simple question. We need ones that you say is short and simple that really isn't because that'll take up more time. <laughs> Got it. Which give we me, need right give now. Me, give me 90 <laughs> seconds. Detroit, good to see you. Joanna, Adam, everyone else, Brad. Well, while we wait 80 more seconds, if anyone has anything to say, ask in chat or jump on stage. And maybe if Chris R. gets some better service, he'll pipe back in. <clears throat> hey, Mr. Bill. Good morning. All right, while we wait, let's see what's going on. All right, Nate, the... I, got, I got a fun oh. one, Nate. Okay, so... <laughs> Did um, you just Google the, it? The Apostle John, when he said, he kept, when he kept saying he's a disciple that Jesus loved, like, obviously, Jesus loved all the disciples. So was this a divine moment, him saying this, or was he in, the first person to engage in personal branding? <laughs> that is an interesting question. I don't know the answer. You have stumped me. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, well, I've read commentaries where basically it's that he's he's being um, like personally humbled, like you know, he's just the disciple who Jesus loved, and and it's exactly the exact connotation you just made. Jesus loved all the disciples, so you're not special. Uh, it was it was that kind of thing. Like I am the clubhouse member in which Chris loves. <laughs> Chris loves everybody, so yeah, it's not special mm -hmm. if I love you. So, because if he was engaging in personal branding, he was a genius. Because we still say that today and call him <laughs> special because of it. Oh, Chris, what do you think about that meme? The uh, oh, what 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 was it? It was the one I sent you about the seances. Um. Where is it? Oh, it's so good. Is having Great. a say <laughs> is having a seance in Halloween okay as long as we only try to contact Mary and the Saints? It's fantastic. Oh man. Shout out Catholics and love. Yeah. <clears throat> oh Catholic. <laughs> <clears throat> so good. Yeah. Oh wait, can you can you tell me why it's different? Oh, okay. I guess not. It's not worship. It's veneration. It's not about worship, guys. We're just, you know, come on. <laughs> oh, boy. Friday shenanigans. It is Friday shenanigans. I mean, we do have a lot more shenanigan goings on here since less people can find us. Yeah, that's true. I, I don't know, like, I don't know if, is, do you really feel like the reach has been limited, or like, do you feel that, like, I don't know, that that something else is, something else is afoot, like, that people have left the the app? Like, do you think that people are still here, and they can't find us, or do you feel like people have just left the app because they're just giving up on it, because they're just disappointed? I I think a lot probably have left the app, but but no, I, I think if Clubhouse didn't disconnect all the wires for how people found public rooms, that there would still be plenty of, of people who are new 
who see a giant cross called Ask a Christian and want to give us crap. Like, I, I think if they left all the wires connected, there would still mm -hmm. be plenty to find us. But since they made that, like, pretty much impossible, like, unless you know someone who knows someone who knows someone who's in this room, it's not going to show up. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think I think uh, a, par a pretty big part is people leaving the app. But the way bigger part is them, like, just not letting people discover public rooms anymore. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, that's fair. I, you know, it's like with all the clubhouse nonsense. I don't know. I, I feel like there's just. I don't know how to put it. I guess there's just a lot of stuff that I think is different, but the same. But it's worse. It's demonstrably worse. Oh yeah, like for for I mean, if you want an echo chamber of the same people like, you know, that you want to have like a virtual coffee or something like that every day and, you know, catch up on the goings on of like people's life and stuff like that. I mean, it's probably better because it like weeds out people that just like randomly show up. Um, but you could have done that anyways. Like that's the whole point of houses. Like you could make them private where only members you wanted. So it's like you already had that ability. So the only thing it's done is people that want to engage with diversity of thought like us or the other religious or science or philosophy rooms where they want a constant influx of new people uh, because otherwise conversations get stale. Not saying you're stale like an old piece of toast, but, you know, I mean, it's, it's nice when, when there's new conversations and every now and then somebody will ask a question we haven't heard a thousand times. So, I mean, that's good. It, like, helps everyone grow and, you know, keeps us on our toes. As opposed to talking about, you know, bestiality and carrying pig's blood. I mean, you know, it's a Friday, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Did we scare CEO off? <laughs> might have. It might be like, oh, man, you guys, you guys are too much. There's like some like supernatural barrier that we just put up that like is, is preventing people from coming in. They're like wanting to click on the link, but they're like, something's telling me I shouldn't click this today. Right. <laughs> yeah, I could buy that. So how far are you uh, driving to do your work? I'm, uh, I'm actually haven't left yet. So I've got to, um, I got to go out to UCF today or near UCF today. My wife works out at UCF, but, um, uh, it's just like a, it's like a whole thing. Um, there's like this really old system um, that uses like literally, I'm not exaggerating when I say 1980s technology and I've got to fix it and hope that I can remember <laughs> how crap worked in the 80s. And so I'm like, ah, I'll do my best. Can't you, you sell guys them really should update this. Huh? Yeah. Can't you sell them in a new system? I mean, I don't sell those kind of systems, so I'm, I'm like, I don't really Maybe care, but like. Right. Well, there's a whole bunch of other infrastructure that have to go along with that, that I am just like not down with like, and you know, POS systems are just horrible. Like every one of them just sucks and they're just real bad. And there's no, there's no redeeming qualities to any of them. So, um, I don't want to be in that boat. I don't want people mad at me all the time. <laughs> You know, like I sell technology that actually works. I'm not going to sell technology I know doesn't work. So, like whenever I hear POS system, I mean, I, I think that that's pretty fitting. Yeah. Like point of sale, now nah, the other thing. Yeah, 100%. I mean, like, <laughs> you know, it's just, it is that way. I mean, unfortunately, it's just like because there was a monopoly or a duopoly situation for so long, people got used to these companies just abusing the crap out of them. And, you know, so restaurateurs just know, like, oh, by the way, two or three days a month, I'm just not going to be able to co co collect credit cards. <laughs> you know, like, they just they just take it. And I'm like, why? Okay. You know, that just it's... happened. I tried to order pizza over the weekend, and, and the guy's like, uh, hey, do you have cash? I'm like, uh, no, why? He's like, uh, if you could stop by an ATM and get cash or something, I'm like, I can't accept credit cards. The system's malfunctioning. I'm like, man, that's weird. Yeah. So it's probably something like that. Yeah, it's a hundred percent like that. That's it. Yeah, I mean, I just. Hey. Anyway. Morning, Sam. Not Morning, so. brother. How you doing, man? Good, good. Did, did you and Chris have your little powwow? 
on the phone? No. Oh. <clears throat> well, how else are you? I'm good, just breathing around here, trying to get ready, get my day going here in a few minutes. What's on the menu today? Uh, nothing super holy so far, I can tell you that. <laughs> uh, yeah, true. Um, Nate, Nate was telling us about his favorite pets. <laughs> well, Sam, what, what have you been talking about lately? You got anything? Nothing new. Always Calvinism. Nothing, we haven't changed off of that in about six weeks. We still Some, at it. Someone's not going to start World War Four because I guess we're in <laughs> three right now. <laughs> nah, we're just talking about uh, five decessions and oh boy, Calvinistic decessions. That's what we're going to talk about today. Chris, you can tell us about your favorite pets. Yeah, I got lots. I had a cat. My cat died. Bad. Recently? No, about 10 years ago. I haven't got a new one. Okay. I like dogs. Nope. I got, you know, wine and wine are horrible. I mean, they're, they're sweet, but they're just, like, very temperamental, and they tear up stuff. Don't get one unless you have lots of space. What'd you say, Weimaraners? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lovely dogs. I mean, and they, whoever is the person that introduces them to the family, that's the person that they are mostly endeared to. And they will follow you around and be there. And oh my God, the anxiety that they have when you're gone. But sweet mm. dogs. <laughs> Tasha, good morning. <clears throat> Hope you're doing well. Good morning. I am. Thank you. Do you have any holy topic on your mind? Oh, good. Steph's here. Uh, go ahead, Tasha. <laughs> Do you... Yeah, you, should, you should probably let Steph pick because I am drawing a blank right now. Oh, what I have for Steph is the farthest thing from holy. <laughs> oh, no. uh, I can't even wait. This is going to be great. Uh, All right. I'll just recap since no one else, and you have had your chance, has brought anything godly. Okay, Steph. <clears throat> really, I was just like dumbfounded. I'm just like, holy crap. I'm like, I wonder what Steph would have to say about this. So last night, whenever I typed that, like, I've got the topic of all topics. It was just from, like, shock and awe. Okay, so in short, basically, there's this video game group I'm on on Discord. And there's, like, uh, there's like a thousand people on the server. But there's only, like, five that specifically play, you know, what I play. And a couple of them left, so we've replaced them in the last three weeks with new people. Anyways, one of these new people was immediately, we're like, okay, something's a little odd or a little off. Like, something's going on with this guy. Like, he's he's on the spectrum, probably. But, you know, we're being polite, so we're not, we're not bringing it up. Um, anyways, so... Every time he he's just kind of goes off on weird tangents. Um, so last night he's like asking about dog training before like the game starting and stuff like that. So he's like, guys, what about dog training? Like, do you have any advice? I'm like, oh yes, yes. So I'm you know you know where I'm gonna do. I'm I'm gonna say like Caesar Milan, watch all the episodes. He's like, the dog bar won't stop barking and it's like aggressive towards other dogs. Blah blah blah. blah. And he's like, uh, so we're trying to help him out. And he's like, and, and guys, you know my my dog like. We're like, what kind of dog do you have? And it's like, oh, it's a blue nosed pit bull. And, you know, she, she's really, really nice, and like a good show dog, and like, you know, really, really like kind of muscular and sleek, and you know, it's, it's kind of, kind of a, a, attractive. D do you know what we're saying? And we're like, no. And he's like, well, well, she's a girl dog, and and uh, you know, I'm just kind of like attracted. And I'm like, okay, oh, are no. we being? Oh, no. My first, my first thought is, are we being trolled? Because it's Discord with a bunch of gamers, so high chance. But based on our interactions over the last couple of weeks with this guy, we're like, and one of the other guys is like a psychology student. So I'm like prodding him on. I'm like, hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? And I'm like, that's going to be a great topic he's going to bring to his professor tomorrow. Anyway, but then he's like, wait, dude, leave the dog alone. And he's like, 
well, well, I, I'm autistic, and it's just hard to hard to separate. Like, you know, it's an attractive dog because it's like all like, you know, how a dog should look, but it's it's really I'm attracted to it in another way too. We're like, oh my gosh, like I don't I can't believe I'm having this conversation. So, Steph, I ask you. <clears throat> No, what? Where no, I, what? Where? Do I, how, how? I will tell you. I will tell you, Steph. I will. T- I, I, it's only half as bad as it's gonna sound. Okay. So I'm. Sh- I'm sure your stance on bestiality is that's bad, right? I, I, I'm sure. That's but my, my. But my question for you. I mean, she is an Armenian, so we have to ask. <laughs> <laughs> but, wow. But, wow. Wow, Chris. But I can't. Steph, what I'm trying to ask you is since this guy said he was autistic, and I know you have like done a ton of research because you have friends and family and your own your own family, you know, I forget exactly what you said the diagnosis was, but it's something like that. So I wanted to ask your thoughts. Is this anything in your research, like from from anything you've ever uncovered, where stuff like this is fine, or like does this happen, or is this guy like yes, you can be autistic, but that is not an issue? Kind of like remember when like Roseanne blamed uh, was like Lunesta um, on her racist like tweet she made or whatever, and was like freaking out and fired her for being like racist um, because of something she said about was it Barack Obama or someone, and Lunesta wrote back and she's like they're like hey Roseanne. Uh, a known side effect of Lunesta is not racism. So, so my question is: in all of your um, research into stuff on the spectrum, are weird things like this like a thing, or is this a category like categorically different? Like, no. If he's autistic, that's one thing. His thing with animals is one hundred percent completely different. Or is there some si- sort of overlap? Like they can't perceive a difference from human to animal, or something like that. That's what I wanted your opinion on. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Autism and bestiality are in no way whatsoever related in any world possible. Uh, this is not something, these two things should not be linked. If you know someone with autism who uh, is claiming that there's some, just no. Uh, the other thing is that autism has sort of become, it, ASD used to be sort of broken out into high functioning, low functioning Asperger's. There were different qualifications of autism spectrum disorder. And now over the past three or four years, they've gotten rid of Asperger's and they've put it all into one. It's become a sort of catch all diagnosis. And the fallout of that is that lots and lots and lots of adults are now going through um, diagnostic processes to figure out if their whole life they've had autism. But my perspective on this is that it's it's becoming a culturally destructive thing where people are blaming tics or strange things that they do on an autism diagnosis and it doesn't make sense. Like, oh, I've never been able to hold down a job because I have autism or I yeah, do drugs kind because of, I have autism or I, I want to <clears throat> sleep with my dog because I have autism. Like, this is not Okay. That, that's I kind of what not. I was wondering. Is is it like people blame ADD? Like if someone's like you know had like cocaine and meth and like a ton of caffeine, they're like it's my ADD, it's my ADD. They're like no, dude, it, it's all the other stuff you've done. You don't have ADD. It's right. like that. Like people blame ADD on everything when when they are not diagnosed with ADD. It's just other stuff. So it's kind of like that. People are just like Sometimes. trying to excuse their behavior by blaming something else. So, yeah, I think and, and, that autism has become so widely diagnosed, and especially for older teenagers and adults now, that people are, I'm seeing anecdotally, people are using it as an excuse. Um, and in my opinion, what I've seen, autism <laughs> is not a, like, it's not, you have it or you don't. It's not like this, oh, well, that could be an autistic tendency. It's like autistic tendencies are very recognizable, and screwing dogs is not one of them. Like, that is insane i would call him on that uh and i I mean if the opportunity arises is like whoa that is that is a very offensive claim that you're making to people who have autism that is actually kind of horrific and you shouldn't like like what he's saying to you is i have no control over this because of my autism what autism does is it will in in a lot of people it will produce repetitive obsessive behaviors right 
So in the same way where someone who has OCD might be obsessed about avoiding germs, they're washing their phone, they're cleaning their hands, they, they can't really get the thought about, oh my gosh, about germs. <laughs> yeah, I know you have OCD. All right. So in the way that you, <laughs> in the way that like people with OCD, they become kind of fixated on a thought without their consent. They're having a repetitive thought that's bothering them. And then they have a choice. Can they, do they engage in the thought or not? Do they wash their hands or do they not? So the treatment for obsessive compulsive thinking is to not engage in the compulsion. Don't wash your hands. And eventually your brain will get the idea that it doesn't need to remind you to wash your hands. But what if they're dirty, Autism? Steph? Right. So you have to, this is where it's called exposure, re, exposure and relapse prevention. So you have to decide, am I washing my hands before I eat? That's fine. That's not obsessive. Am I washing them every five minutes? This is obsessive, right? So, so part of it is you need a specialist to help you. Anyway, we're off topic now. Autism has obsessive tendencies that are similar but the way that he's describing it is then he's engaging in the compulsion. I have an obsessive thought about my dog. Okay, fine. Weird, but fine. And I also engage in it. Now we have a problem. Do, okay. you, do you see and, and what so, I'm saying? Like, yeah. Yeah. And so for the record, like he could legitimately be autistic, but him trying to say that in some way affects the dog thing, like he could totally be legit, legitimately autistic, but that has absolutely nothing to do with the dog thing, not like, um, you know, if yeah. you're autistic, you're more susceptible to like, I don't know, like some people will say like medication makes you more susceptible to like delusions of grandeur and things like that. Therefore, if you do something, it can be linked to the medication, not that the medication outright does it, but it makes you more susceptible. So you're saying like, as far as you know, there is nothing uh, about like autism that would make you maybe more susceptible to acting on thoughts or something like that. There is completely unrelated. So if this guy is legitimately autistic in a way that no one would dispute, him trying to say, well, you know, I have a thing for dogs and I'm autistic. Be like, well, no, you're autistic, but that has nothing to do with your thing for dogs. That's a completely different thing that you need to work on. Very quickly. Yes. And just to tie that up, like it's, it's the, it, he could make a case for, I have obsessive thinking, but then he loses me at, I'm like, when he's telling you about his dog, he's engaging in obsessive thinking and that he should know better. Right. So people who have like I have a condition like this, I have obsessive thoughts. So then when I have it, I, I make the choice. Do I engage in this thought or do I not? So this is the equivalent of me going up and being like, well, I have anxiety and I have obsessive thoughts about dying. So I'm going to lay in bed all day long and it's justified because I have anxiety and I'm not. Do you see what I'm saying? Like he, he could be having a symptom related to his autism, but then by the time he's defending it, he has crossed into like now we're way outside of it. This is not, this is not typical um, pathology of autism saying that you're attracted to your animal because you have autism, that, that it's two very unrelated things. And the closest he could get is saying that he has some obsessions, but I've never even heard of like obsessions in autism will be something like um, lining up things because it's more visually pleasing or categorizing colors together, like taking a bunch of markers and categorizing them or having your pens lined up by shortest to longest or um, memorizing a bunch of facts about a specific topic like football players or animal kingdom. It's not going to be like I'm wildly obsessed about my one dog. I, I have not in all of my research on my kids and my brother who have autism. I, I haven't, <laughs> I haven't come across that. That is, an obsessive compulsive tendency unrelated to autism. That is my yeah. layman's diagnosis. Yeah, let's just stick to washing our hands a lot and call it a day. And in other news, hey, I'm going to be looking for uh, new members to play our game because uh, that guy's out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, I wouldn't, okay, to, to, to put the point on it, I would not make any concessions for him. That is weird. He does not be needed, he does not need to be treated delicately. That is, uh, he's just, yeah, no. He need, someone needs to tell him that that's not because of autism. He has a separate problem. Oh no, he was out either way. Um, I, I was I, I was just wondering out of my own curiosity. But I mean, you know, if you were gonna if you're gonna be like, no, no, it's these issues, and you know, because you're like that more touchy feely, emotionally related person, I'd be like, hey, I met someone you can talk to. <laughs> well, now I feel bad because the doctor diagnosed me with ADD when I was a kid, and Steph says I don't have it. I'm just thinking I uh, have it, so now I have to diagnose Whoa. myself with S-T-U-P-I-D. <laughs> <laughs> that was cute, but Adam, I did not say that. <laughs> I didn't, no. If you have a diagnosis, trust your clinicians, um, and then 
and then get proper treatment. Like, like was this guy told that he has autism and then everyone just was like, okay, cool, go live your life, right? And now he's attributing all this stuff to autism. <laughs> like, well, my, my, my doctor called it ADD. My dad called it ADLBD, attention deficit lazy butt disorder. I For the record, the official position of the Ask the Correction Room is don't take medical advice where you're not doctors. Yeah, trust your trust your providers. Uh, but then your next thought would be, wow, I have a diagnosis of autism and I'm attracted to my dog. I should probably call a therapist. Like, And then the therapist would walk you through what obsessive thinking is and whether or not you have to engage in it, right? Like that's that's the treatment for that, which this guy has made no effort to do. So well, I just, don't change, really just change the dog's name to Grace and tell them that he was irresistible. Oh, oh my <laughs> gosh, I'm dead. <laughs> Oh my! That was a good that one. That is savage. Uh, that is a good <laughs> one. Oh my goodness! Oh my! Wow! I had to come off mute for that one. That's that's wild. I like it. Good one. Oh man! That was rough. Um, <laughs> said the dog. <laughs> rough, rough. Uh, rough. I see what you did rough. there. Nate. <laughs> yeah. Someone like say the Lord's prayer or something. Somebody. Oh, yeah. Heavenly Father, please cleanse this room of all spirits that have now inhabited it. <laughs> uh, in Jesus' name, get them out of here. I like how the longer you go to an AG church, the more your prayers sound um, charismatic. It's kind of fun. You know, it's only been like two months. AG Assemblies of God? Is that, it? Is that what AG yeah. is? Yeah. Oh, Steph. So this church is not, okay, so I keep hearing things about Assemblies of God. This church is not charismatic at all. Like, there's no. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> the one I'm attending, right? So they have two campuses. And there's no, like, every time I hear people describe something about Assemblies of God, it's not, like, so far, this church is indiscernible <clears throat> in, in behavior from the Free Methodist Church I grew up in. I well, have not have well, they all have, like, different flavors, right? So, uh, so if you just go to, like, ag.com or .org, like, the, the official, like, Assemblies of God, like, for the whole denomination, like, you'll see, like, they're, they're like, you know, statements of faith and, like, what they believe. And, and it's going to seem very normal, right? Just like a Calvinist place or Methodist or – you're, you're going to see the denomination stuff, and it's going to sound, like, very uh, uh, not insane. Uh, but the, so, I mean, all that you have to do to be in Assemblies of God or Methodist or whatever denomination we're talking about – is adhere to those principles and those statements of faith, and then you know you can be in that denomination. But then everyone has their flavor, right? So you'll find, like me, I grew up in Assemblies of God Church, and you know I went to some that were like backwoods Oklahoma. They were extremely like holiness. Like aside from the Trinity, Brandon would have felt very comfortable there. Uh, like like they were like very very holiness. The women wore like prairie clothes. Like it was odd. Um, and but then we moved. To more of the city, we went to another Assemblies of God church, and there was even two in the same town, First and Second Assembly on different sides of the town. And even one was like basically Baptist, except I guess they believe the AG stuff. Um, but then the Assemblies of God I went to was more middle of the road, and you know they, they would believe in tongues every now and then. Someone would like quote give a message in tongues or something like that, and uh, you know every now and then someone would let out like a Hallelujah or an Amen. But then you went to the other Assemblies of God, and it's probably what you're talking about, Steph. Like it, if you would have put Baptists on that door, people would have been convinced. Um, so, I mean, you know, all, all the denominations are going to have their different flavors um, within that. So some will be, like, charismatic, um, you know, like, do, doing Jericho marches, like, swinging from the chandeliers, like, one step away from bringing out snakes and poison. Um, don't do that. Don't do that. But, I mean, then others are, like, hey yeah, now, just very... Hey, now, hey, now. What's Wait, wrong what's with wrong with snakes and poison? Snakes? What's wrong with poisonous snakes? Well, technically, I guess venomous, because snakes aren't poison. They're oh, venomous. But... Every time you say flavor, I start thinking about like church as different, different uh, flavors of ice cream. It's not your ADD why, causing why, that. Why, why, why is that happening? Why? It's not your ADD. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> hey, Joanna. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you. I just wanted to comment on Chris's Josh Owen picture. My what? Your oh, my John Owen. Owen picture? You you recognized him as John Owen? That's impressive. Josh Owen, no. 
Yeah, I had no idea who that was. I just thought it was like Chris's dad or someone in a wig. Yeah, no, that's a that's a historical figure. His name was uh, John Owen. Was what Pur- did he do? He was a Puritan who wrote extensively on uh, doctrine of God. Good stuff. Deal with uh, it. Steph, I think I we, we never got back to you. But, yeah, so what do you think of your Assemblies of God thing? Like, Oh, um, yeah, I mean, I'm. Uh, it's a huge improvement over the Calvinist church, so I'm thrilled with that. Uh, and I don't have to sit there with my heckles up and my antennas out every sermon, so that's nice. I can actually relax. Um, the community is nice. I don't know. I, I think that I'm becoming less allergic to charismatic tendencies as I as I go. Um, but it's definitely wildly outside of my tradition. So if I saw people sort of like at the other church I went to, that was a vineyard church that they were waving flags and dancing. I was like, I'm not coming back, (laughs) you know, um, but more power to people who, I guess, who want to do that. It's, it's, you know, uh, so I like it. I like it. It's very close to what I'm used to, but I also, the teaching is very sound and I love the group and it's a, it's a live church. I'm enjoying it. Well, Jesus is pleased, I'm sure. Yes. Yeah, the, the flag-waving thing, I, I mean, been to those churches, grew up in a lot of those churches, not really my thing. So, no, I, I don't want to. We, we went to one assembly, got church down the road. Oh, when we first moved here? Good Lord. Yeah, man, they, they brought out the flags. They brought out the shofar. I was going to say, like, please describe this, because I'm thinking of I'm thinking of one thing when you say flag waving and I'm, I'm trying to figure out exactly like a john, like it. imagine imagine like going up and getting like the the christian or the american you know like a flag you'd see right like at like a in like a building like right? flag like or flag. banner or ribbons or something like that yeah yeah oh, just like, like that like attached banner. to a pole and you like run around and wave it and swing it and you know praising jesus but like that's what this one ag church did went one time never went back um and they had a shofar so like in the middle of worship they're like oh Oh, oh shifars are awesome. <laughs> shifars are like, freaking right, dude, awesome. I'm out. That's a legit musical instrument. It's a horn. I agree, but it's not for me. <laughs> That's hilarious, Nate. Wait a minute. So, so what's the issue with with uh, banner waving or flag waving or ribbon twirling? I guess they just consider it like an expression of expression of worship or that's how they do their thing for god or something I, i'm sure they pull from some kind of verse about psalms or david dancing and like banners and flags and noise like i'm, I'm sure they get it somehow in scripture but even if they don't they just be like well that's how i want to worship god or i don't know like 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 interpretive dancing right has anyone seen that like th- those are usually reserved yeah that's what they had at this vineyard church and you yeah, know they'll, I've have, seen, like, they'll like, like a spirit dancer or something and it's like that's how they worship God. It's like, nah. yes, yeah, right. and that's fine, right? Because okay, at the Vineyard Church I went to that had this, or my dad would take us to um, a church in Rochester called Bethel that was a very charismatic church, and we would go sometimes, and I really liked it. Like the energy was fun, and you know, and even at Vineyard it was fun. You, like you see a bunch of people who are just really excited and happy to be there and praising the Lord, and I liked it. So what happens is that this will happen during worship, and then during the message, it's like calm down. And then during worship, it starts back up again. It's just like, I don't want to condemn anybody who worships that way. Right. But it's so outside of my tradition. I find it so distracting (laughs) that I can't, I, it, it's just, I feel condemned, Steph. I'm sorry. And I I don't want to condemn anybody because I have the condemner. (laughs) Yeah, Bob, what's up? I was going to just chime in that back in the eighties, uh, the Assemblies of God really went high on P and W because uh, that's when I first got acquainted with the Assemblies of God in the eighties, and uh, I remember the pastor and all of his praise leaders were going to places to learn how to praise and worship with the shofar and the flags and all that stuff. So. It originated in about the middle 80s. Yeah, the praise and worship schools, I don't know. It's a little odd. And, I mean, I get the practicality. Like, if someone, like, you know, wants to be a worship leader at church, like, I, I get some instruction, right? Like, like housekeeping rules, right? Um, so, in a way, Chris would totally agree with a praise and worship school. Like, you know, wrap the cords this way. Hold the microphone this way so people can understand you. Like, like I, I get the practicality stuff, but if it's like, 
uh, you know, when it's time to call heaven to earth, you do this or chant this. Uh, I mean, I don't know that they do that. I'm sure someone does. But I'm like, ooh, okay, that's that's odd. That's a little sounds a little odd to my ear. That's exactly what they do, and they and they get all carried away, and they think that praising Jesus, you know, is praising God. That's what you know. Maybe Bob, you were doing so good, Bob. You were doing so good. We we're right there with you, Bob. Oh, Steph did good day before yesterday. I haven't even, I didn't even mute my microphone except to make a video yesterday. I, I did not, I did not get involved with any of whatever it was going on yesterday after the idiot decided he going to kill people. Wait, what? Oh, you mean the guy in the news? Yeah. Uh, gee, what's up? Hey, did they catch that guy? Not that I know of. Like, last night I was watching the news and they said there was still a manhunt going on. And then I heard someone else did it, too. Like, there was another copycat. I, I heard, I really, I, I just heard that, like, in passing. Maybe a neighbor told me. I don't even know. But I heard there was, like, another one, like, was it New Jersey? I, I don't know. I heard there was some other guy that did the same thing. Like, not, not near to the same degree in numbers. But, anyways. What's up, G? How's life across hey. the pond? It's good, thank you. So I just, I was wondering um, where, about Romans 9.22, where it says that um, basically there hey, are, Mama. no, that there are vessels, <laughs> there are there are vessels for um, destruction. And I was just wondering how that would work because, God is not willing that any should perish. So I just, yeah, I just wanted to know, like, what's that about? Well, if Pastor Sam can answer, I'd like to hear what he has to say. And then I would like Chris to follow it up with <laughs> what he has to say. And then we will but commence not, the end times. But they're not uh, here. But, but what, they're not Pastor here. Sam, sir. Huh? What are you talking about? Pastor I'm Sam, not an sir. apparition, I promise. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Oh, Pastor, my. Pastor Sam, what do you uh, do? You want to answer Gina's uh, G's question? The uh, Romans ten. The I'd have to of look at the context. Uh, I, I could take Pastor Sam's place. Okay, you have to, and I'm about to get in the shower. I can't talk about this, but you have to read all of Romans, right? And you have to discern what is being said about Israel, and what is prescriptive for all of mankind moving forward. And you will find that Romans is consistently addressing issues with. Israel, and not prescriptive for all of humankind moving forward. Right. And then you can just read what literally the rest of the church talks about. And it's, that, uh, yeah, it, yeah. Um, and uh, <laughs> essentially the, the, the context of Romans 9 is God's sovereignty and his choosing. And so, and so, yeah, again cute but not true um so so the so the idea here is that do, god does not want everyone to perish but god does not always inst instantiate his uh prescriptive will into his decree not a thing because yeah of course yeah anyway um so what we would say is that um god's decree is respecting the human free will choices that we make. Um, but his decree is his decree. And so when he says, Jacob, I have loved Esau, I have hated before the twins came out of the womb. Um, this is talking about the eternal decree and it has nothing to do with his prescriptive will. Still and so, yeah, yeah. So, so you're going to get two different views on this. You're going to get the Arminian slash provisionist view that attempts to recontextualize Romans 9 into, into talking about nations. Um, you can also uh, get the uh, reformed view, which is going to be, um, you know, that Romans 9 is about the salvation of individuals, um, as is the entire book of Romans about the salvation of individuals and not nations. And so... Um, starting from Romans 1 all the way to Romans 11, Paul is laying out an argument about 
individual salvation, that salvation is by faith, justification by faith alone. And uh, that is the main thrust of the book of Romans from 1 to 11. Yes, well, the challenge that you, Gia, just yeah. real quick, Gia, there's, yeah, if you want to hear both sides of the argument and get a really well-rounded view of what different sides think about it, there's um, a debate that Pastor Sam actually played yesterday, but I'd heard it before, <laughs> between James White and Leighton Flowers on mm. Romans 9. And you'll get you'll get a really solid argument from both sides, and sort of be able to walk away with a conclusion. Yeah, that's a really good uh, suggestion because that way, you know, you have people who are supposedly experts uh, in their field of uh, biblical discoveries that are um, they disagree, but important um, uh, arguments to uh, ideas that make it look convoluted or ironed out. So, yeah, that would be a really good, uh, let's see. I'll pin, can I pin it in the chat, uh, Nate? I'm putting it on the top. Okay, great. Yeah. Before you do, are... if anyone wants to join the Discord server to keep track of us in case Clubhouse <laughs> loses us again, hurry up and click that Discord link before Steph removes it. Hey, what game do you play, uh, Nate? Uh, Fortnite and Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> so, Gia, go ahead and click this link and save it to your watch later. And uh, it's a good listen. Like, it's, again, I think both sides present the arguments really, really well. Um, so you could, you know, take notes and get a pretty... It'll go much more in-depth than we can here. Um, and then after Gia has it, Nate can put his Discord link back up. Nate's busy in Thank the battle you. right now. If stuff's really a, a good... Um, I don't know. I can't think. If Steph wants to, she can. <laughs> you got it, Gia? Yeah, thank you. All right, I'll put the Discord link back up. Well, you remember the conversation the other day with Truthful? Uh, he He's not very truthful to God. <laughs> faithful, not truthful. But again, this, this debate <laughs> that has been correction. pinned. I, I so, stand corrected. I stand so, corrected. So, Gia, this debate Don't that has do been it, pinned... Chris. I know you just Googled. We, we finished it. We're done. We got no, it. No, you can't put up a deceptively edited debate and then expect it, that to be the balanced version. Edited. Of it's course it is, because the edited. full version is Hold available, on. and I can show you where the runtime is different. <laughs> right. You guys well, are hang, hang, unbelievable. Hang, hang. Wait, wait, Hold wait. On. Hang on. Wait, 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 wait. I'm going to start singing. No one wants that. In the interest of, tra interest of transparency... Chris apparently said this thing is highly edited. So, Chris, say your thing so everyone can have the full information. And then, hopefully, being rational adults, uh, they can figure out if it's edited or, not, you know, whatever they want to do with that. So, so you're saying it is edited, not the full debate? Is that your claim? It's because I put it, it's on Soteriology 101, but Chris, I can't find the full length debate anywhere else. So, if you have another not Soteriology 101 link, then send it. But that's the only place on YouTube where it has the whole thing. They have the cross examination only. No, there's, there's, there's. Okay, can uh, you find it and yeah, post Alpha it? Omega posted the entire debate, not the edited one. I will yeah, go we, ahead and we, post that. We played the entire debate. Yeah, that's the uh, whole thing. We watched it's, the entire. Yeah, debate. again, there was no, there was no cuts or any of those things. Okay. One, yeah, there's no introduction in this. this. It's twelve yeah. minutes for that rebuttals, everything. We watched the entire debate. It's just on Soteriology 101, which you don't like. But if you have a different link that also shows the whole debate, then post that. But this is the debate. I don't know. Find it on a different channel, I guess. Yeah, but don't forget. Yeah, don't forget, though. There's another debate coming up pretty soon with my friend Dale Tuggy and this sir, whatever his name is, White. Uh, he should learn a few things. That's coming up soon. So keep your eye out for that one, too. Uh, we want to make sure that they don't, you know, cut anything short. Who's debating? My friend Dale Tuggy and Mr. White, whoever, what did you say his James name? White is not going to debate Dale Tuggy. Wait huh? a minute, are you serious? What? Yeah. Is, James White and, accepted and, a debate with Tuggy? Yeah, yes, and James, uh, White. James oh. yeah, and James yeah. White is going to be debating Leighton Flowers in in March. <clears throat> again? Yeah, again. 
because I guess Slayton just hasn't gotten enough. Yeah, I guess I not. So the truth hurts. Um, no, James. Hey, yeah, and Dale is going to tell him the truth. I can assure you. I'm more interested in the idea that why would why would James White accept a debate with Tuggy? It's because all the unitards are holding up Tuggy as their main, um, as like their main uh, academic because Tuggy does have an actual PhD. And so everyone is extremely tired of hearing about how great Dale Tuggy is. And he's this PhD guy. And yeah. And so he's just going to end this once and for all. He's yeah, going to yeah. embarrass Dale Tuggy to no end simply by just laying out the arguments. I mean, it's just. Hey, if he does that, I'll take your leotards and wear them for a week in public. You know, birds. Yeah, those. Are you talking about? You're talking about like Mormons with magic underwear? No, you got to have some leotards since you're the retard. That's a Calvinist. Calvinist. Oh, get, get him, Seth. Get Jeez. him, Seth. Get him. Calvinists have to have some 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 leotards, don't they? Uh, sure. I'm dying. <laughs> Steph, I saw that uh, word was one of your triggers. Or was it Michael? Michael. I know Michael. That's one of his No, things. that's a Michael trigger. I mean, I don't really get triggered by words, but I don't like it when people when people use retard as an insult. But, you know, hey, that's just me. Well, I'm still trying to figure out why they're putting man above God as being the ultimate knowledge. Because, oh. I, mean, I mean, I heard this one's more knowledgeable than this one. This one's more knowledgeable than that one. But God's, God holds all the knowledge, I think. Yeah. Well, that's true. When you try to when you try to assert the sovereignty of man, this is what happens. No one thinks. Who thinks that? You do. Them Calvinists. No one Don't you know them retard them reform. Bob. <laughs> Remember, Steph, Bob's on your side. <laughs> Wait, is that one of those things you can say it if you are it? Like I, I can, I can talk about obese people because i'm like obese is, is it one of those things like you can say it if you are it so like we shouldn't give hard bob a hard time because you know he can say it if he is yikes it. that was a long burn but it worked in the end <laughs> i do need to lose some weight goodness what's happened to me people won't stop buying cookies all right i'm finally getting in the shower y'all leave me alone <laughs> Well, you come out clean, if, and if you, and we'll be sure to take care of this. He, he called me a unitard or something. <laughs> what? I mean, that's a I mean, term that, of endearment. That's a that, term of endearment, Bob. All I, you unitards are the same. Uh, yeah, and all of them reformed Calvinists are also. What about uh, but the anyway, anyway, uh, carry on. Nate. All the Calvinists are not the same, Bob. Oh, they aren't. No, some of them are smarter than others. Oh, yeah. True. A lot of them are smarter than some others. Uh, but that still don't put them in the, you know, upstairs category. I'm sure Nate has heard of Dumb and Dumber. I mean, it's I think Nate movie. experienced Dumb and Dumber like every day here. Are you saying that's me and you? Hey, no. I mean, yeah, sure. Why not? When you put you, when you put me up against baptized, I mean, I mean, you're, you're that going is to the, that is a form of dumb and dumber. Yeah. I'm no, that's going to the up. That's going to the upper levels. Yeah. yeah, Bob, you said it, not me, buddy. Well, anyway, uh, I'm sure James White will not enjoy his debate with my friend Dale, I can assure you. I think he will not enjoy it, no, because Dale is not going to use any kind of logic or facts or anything else. He's just going to make stuff up on the fly because that's when what Dale debate? Tuggy does. Why don't you meet me over there when they hold this debate? Me and you are When is this there. debate, Bob? Huh? It's in, I think it's in March. Yeah, it's in March. He's going to be out in the, in the East Coast in March. He's so, going to be at Houston. This is going to be done at Houston. Is that the East Coast? Is it? Well, no, I, that's Texas. But, like, Texas is a whole other thing. Um, 
yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to go to Houston. Yuck. My, my wife described Houston as full of eager, dirty people. <laughs> she had to spend some time in Houston and that she was like, let me just describe, this is just a bunch of very eager, dirty people. Well, it's definitely not like Florida, I'm sure. Or That's Canada. true. Florida is filled with wonderful people oh. like Newton and I. Did you hear that St. Augustine is going to host um, an official Florida Man contest? What? It's true. I, I saw it on Not the Bee. Oh, man, that's pretty great. St. Augustine to host official Florida Man challenge. That is fantastic. <laughs> So what is a Florida man challenge like? Do you know what a Florida man is, Sam? No. That's uh, why I'm asking. Oh, man. Uh, just just, go, just yeah. go to Google and type in Florida man and go to images. No, 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 no. The best thing to do is have them do the birthday thing. Oh, yeah. How, how exactly do you do that? Do you just type in your birthday and then type Florida man? Yes. So you just yeah, type Sam. in, like, you, the month and year, of, they're not the, the, the day and month of your birthday – and then Florida man and do a Google for it. And there will be an article about some crazy thing that a Florida man, Florida man did. And mine was like, um, <laughs> man takes pet alligator or something like out for a walk and gets busted. And it's like this whole thing. Yeah. It's, it's basically like people in Florida for whatever reason, like have a propensity to just do insane things. So like the, the headlines read whenever there's a crime by someone committed in Florida, that's like outlandish. It's like, Florida man robs 7-Eleven while smoking meth with an alligator. Uh, you know, like just the most like insane type of things. Oh, and it's wow. always attributed to like Florida man or Florida woman. Yep. That's like oh, a whole wow. thing. It's like you just, you just go and you Google your birthday <laughs> and Florida man, and there will be some insane story that occurred with, you know, Florida man. It's quite fun. Yeah. You should immediately do this. <laughs> Yeah, let us know your Florida man story. Yeah, I'm working on it, right? <laughs> hey, Chris, do you know anything about Chicken Man? Uh, no. Should I? Ah, uh, well. Yeah, well, you could. Uh, I don't know about the should. Are you Chicken Man? Burk, 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 burk. I sound like Chicken Man, don't I? I, mean, I know about I know about Bible Man. He was pretty cool. <laughs> oh, man. I oh, God. God. <laughs> Google Chicken Man, see what you come up with, Chris. Okay. I think Friday just needs to be our Friday shenanigans. Like I, I it seems like Fridays we just like get off topic and just talk about well what we're doing now, and maybe that's fine. Baptize free sent, for all. I, I, I haven't sent yeah that. Friday free for all. I haven't sent you a link. Baptize, jump on up here if you want. If we've got Bob, it's only fair we invite you to. Oh boy. Oh thanks. Definitely shenanigans. Uh, thanks, thanks, Nate. That that's that that really boosts my morale up a lot. Well, what? You guys are both nice guys. I mean, obviously we disagree agree with your theology, but I mean, you know, if we're not talking about how wrong you guys are, I mean, you know, you're nice people. I agree. I agree. Hey, Brandon, what's up? How was your Friday? Going good. Just out and about, run, finna run some errands and go to the doctor and try to get ahead of some stuff today while I'm in town. But just up and about. How are y'all? Oh, good. Holding down the fort. That's all right. That's all right. Do not listen to this replay. <laughs> not great. <laughs> or the greatest. <laughs> Could be the greatest. Hey, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Baptize. How are you today? Um, I'm doing real good. I, I've got a biblical question. That'll be about ask the first me. one of the day, or maybe the second yeah. one of the day. What's don't, up? Just don't, just don't ask Chris to answer you. Get <laughs> Nate's opinion. <laughs> Man. Well, I want both of those opinion. Um, why did John the Baptist... What was his reason for oh, being, uh, you know, what was his go. reason to be part of the Bible? He was a person that had to live. I know, but it says that. Um, oh, you got real quiet, baptized. 
You just got real quiet. Did something come unplugged, maybe? He's real low. Yeah, so, something happened. Like you bumped your phone or went off speaker or something. You're, you're, we can barely hear anything. We can't understand you. The Lord hath shown up on thee. I don't, I don't know if you unplugged something, baptized or what, but uh, if you get it fixed, let us know. But I mean, you know, why was he in the Bible? Testify as also <laughs> He won the contest from sending in the box top from his grasshopper cereal. <laughs> I heard something about testify about someone's life. Yeah, we can't hear you, Baptized. You, you got to fix your stuff. I don't know if you need to restart the app or what. But I mean, I would say so. So the macro view would be like it could have been anyone. So like why John specifically was not well enough, but. Why John specifically was in the Bible, that could have been anyone that fulfilled John's role, right? Like anyone could have baptized, you know, Jesus and like, you know, prepared the way for the Lord and stuff like that. Uh, so why specifically was John there? Well, John was a soul that inhabited a body and was created as a person. Um, but that could have been anyone. But it just so happened that it was John, you know, in the womb, recognized Jesus uh, when, when their moms got close to each other. And uh, yeah, so to prepare the way for the Lord, to baptize Jesus. I don't know if that was exactly yeah. what you were asking, but without being able to hear you very well, but that's... That's not what happened. According to Scripture, uh, John says in, in John 1, uh, 31 to 34, the reason I came baptizing was that Jesus might be revealed to Israel. What did Jesus' baptism have to do with John saying that he, it, Jesus would reveal to Israel? Yeah, prepare the way of the Lord, like I said. Uh, Brandon, you want to? Yeah, were you trying to say that's something? not correct? Ah, uh, baptize. Yeah, man. Like, I, no, baptize. This is not going to work. I'm telling you, your audio is awful. Like, now you're popping and cracking. Like, you're a little bit louder, but you're popping and cracking. You, you've got to fix your audio. We, we just can't deal with this. I, I was um, going to say, I, I, I was going to say, I was, I was, I was not to be mean, but I was, I was expecting a really more creative answer. But that response, baptize, I'm like, that was biblical. Like, that's what the Bible actually said. Why he came? Uh, that that was. I was very glad to hear that. I, I, I did forget. I, I did forget to mention earlier. I had picked up my son yesterday, um, and I stopped by a used uh, bookstore, and I have a lot of books by F. F. Bruce, but I, uh, most of them are digital. But I found a used copy of um, his commentary on the Book of Philippians, Pristine Condition. I was in a very good mood yesterday. The bookstore didn't have a, a card reader, and so because um, they were so just in love with my little boy, they decided to give them to me for free. I felt oh. very good. Oh yeah, it was a great day. Well, nice. Hey, yeah, man, I, I was in a good mood. Well, hey. uh, Brandon, can hey. you give me an answer to that question I had? W which portion? I'm sorry. <clears throat> About why did John the Baptist, uh, what was his reason for uh, being in the Bible, actually being mentioned in the Old Testament, uh, you know, saying uh, he was a voice of one crying in the desert, preparing the way for the Lord. How did he prepare the way for the Lord? You asking me? Uh, I'm asking Brandon because he said he had a good answer. No, I said, I think what I said initially, I, you had a, a part of what I could hear. You actually had a good answer. I think he's alluded to in Malachi. Said, uh, talked about, uh, behold, I send my messenger before me. Uh, speaking of John the Baptist's ministry, the voice of one crying in the wilderness uh, who would go before him preparing the way, which his ministry would be a ministry of repentance, uh, preparing the hearts of the people of Israel uh, to be uh, in place so that when the Lord comes, they will be uh, ready for his, his ministry, which would be the ministry of well, um, if we could, uh, Nate, uh, could we go over four scriptures and uh, read them and then and have a little conversation about them? Uh, John uh, 1, 31 no, before, to 34. Yeah, before we do that, I, I did call Yvette while you were fixing your stuff. I have a feeling like hers will probably be quicker than yours. So let me just, because this is probably going to get away from us. Um, okay, Yvette, yeah, uh, what did you have to say real quick before we get in the quagmire? Sure, sure. Uh, I have a question about John the Baptist too. Oh. Uh, 
I I I wonder why he wandered in the desert and ate uh, scorpions and something else. Locust, uh, bro. Focus. Focus. What? Locust. Locust and honey. Yeah. yeah. Oh, like locust and honey. Hoppers. There you go. Oh yeah, that all that that's weird. Why did he do that? Why did he? Why was he in the desert to begin he with? He took a he took a Nazarite vow. So. John the Baptist was, oh. so if you look up Nazarite vow, you can see, you know, how that plays out. Oh, okay. Because um, I, I heard like in Charis, well, I was raised, you know, in charismatic churches. So did he, did he see in the spirit? Was he able to see, or is that a lie that something like, it, I just, I just don't see that anywhere in the Bible. Yeah. But I mean, you know, see what? That what? In the spirit. See in the spirit. What does see in the spirit mean? <laughs> like, a seer? Not true, right? like a seer? Do you know yeah. what it is? A, a see in the spirit means that you can see things of the spirit. It can be a vision or a dream. Yeah. Or you might oh. hear a yeah. voice. That's complete nonsense. There's no such thing. Oh, are you okay. conflating that? That's, that's all I'm asking. Are you, are you by any chance conflating that with like John and Revelation? Like how he, like the third heaven and the vision no. he saw? Okay, just making sure. No, I know those are two different Johns. Yeah. <laughs> just making sure. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. That that that's good that you you caught that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so so wait a minute. The Bible says he was led by the spirit something. into the wilderness. Uh, I don't know what Adam? He just said Caleb. something. Chris just said something that is interesting. He said that there's no such thing as it. So if the Bible says it, there's no such thing as it. So the Bible's not true. What are you is talking that, about? That, you got to you got, asking, to you got you, you got to remember asking. Chris is 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 reformed. No, yeah. I know, so, I know. So that has but, nothing to do with anything. What I'm saying is that yeah. you know, there's no such thing as quote unquote seeing the spirit world. That's not in the scripture. It's nonsense. If you can show me in the scripture where somebody has the ability to see the spirit world as one of the listed spiritual gifts, knock yourself out. Hey, but, but before y'all before y'all go on a, a, a spirit, spirit gift fight, I was gonna say that portion on John on uh, John the Baptist. The Bible says I believe he was uh doesn't it say he was led led in the wilderness into his day of revealing or something to that extent uh uh for his for the time of his ministry to Israel. But that wouldn't have anything to do with the spirit seeing stuff. Oh no, I I, I just wanted to throw that out there while I was thinking about it before they had a, a spiritual gifts war. <laughs> wait can i can i say something um jesus saw in the spirit realm right well, uh, sorry i have i have a I have, that's a different question that came up because chris said no one could see in the spiritual realm but did jesus well, see the spiritual realm off the top of my head, head. Yes. Uh, uh, hang on off the top of my head I'm not, I mean, I'm not saying no, but I'm saying I'm not aware of any scriptures that say that off the top of my head. I'm aware of the scriptures that say things like, you know, Jesus perceived maybe in his spirit or Jesus perceived their thoughts, um, like maybe something like that. But I'm not aware of anything that would. And also, what do we mean by spirit world? I mean, do we mean like um, if someone pulls some like, veil off of our eyes, um, like like a chariots of fire, right? Like would someone say like how Elijah and Elisha and he's right. like, look, and he like saw, would we say like that's that's seeing in the spirit or that's just something being revealed. Or like, if you, if you take this, these blinders off of you, you can actually see like angels and demons flying around and stuff like that. Like yeah, that, what that, someone that. means by, yeah, what that. someone means by spirit world, um, it is going to play heavily into how this goes. But we, I also promise baptized we get back to him. So we, we can't get too far away because we have to deal with that. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I just uh, think this would be a good Bible study. It's not going to take real long. It's only four verses. It's John 1, 31 to 34. If you could read that, and then uh, I, I want to show you something that, that I believe is in the Bible that explains just, something. Just let Baptized and, and Bob fight it out again. Look, if you read no, that, I, I if, to, you too, Chris, would get involved because... I think people don't understand why John the Baptist came, and these four scriptures uh, clearly show you why John the Baptist came baptizing. 
It's yeah. uh, John 1, 31 to 34. Yeah, it says it in the Bible, so that we don't need to discuss it. But Chris no, but would not That's what I'm trying to understand understand anyway. about is if we read it, we'll, you will see that it says something that I don't think you understand or know. Yeah, I'm sure Chris I mean, to be understand. fair, I just, I just want to do a Bible study on four verses on right. ask a question. Is that okay? Or? Yeah, I don't have my Bible, though. Somebody will have to read it. Nate, you can read it. I don't have an ability to read the Bible at this exact moment. Oh, for heaven's sake. All right, what is it, John? Oh, wait, hang on. Let, let me preface this real fast. Uh, so since, yeah. it's, uh, since it's apparently Friday fun day and, you know, we've lost all will to survive, um, we are entertaining Bob, who is a Unitarian, who we vehemently disagree with on most things doctrinal, and uh, also Baptized, who we vehemently disagree with on most of his beliefs. However, because... I who, guess who is also just, a Unitarian. I guess through apathy, we've decided to have a discussion with him. So, viewers be warned. Um, people what? giving opinions based on the Bible may not be things that are actually consistent with the Bible. All right, disclaimer done. Go ahead, guys. Okay, uh, Steph, you said you could read John 1, 31 to 34. John 1, 31. Okay, I'm going to start at 29 because there's the title there. Wait, what are, where are they? What are they doing? Uh, Jesus walking around, then you're baptizing. Then why are you baptizing? So this is 25. So the Pharisees are talking to Christ, and they asked him, why are you baptizing if you are neither the Christ nor Elijah nor the prophet? Oh, he's talking to John. Okay. John answered them, I baptize with water, but among you stands one who you do not know, even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was Sorry, these things took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. 29. The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me because he was before me. 31. I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness. I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him. But he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and have borne witness that this is the Son of God. Okay. So what you've just read is John saying that the reason he came water baptizing, and, and then, he, then he says, I seen and testified, or I seen the dove. Uh, so, and, and then he, he goes on to say that God told him, uh, the one you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who will baptize with the, with the Holy Spirit. So what John was doing, he was immersing people underwater. And if he didn't see the dove, he knew that person wasn't the son of God. And, that, and then what happened when Jesus was baptized? The heavens opened up, the dove descended, and uh, God himself said, this is my son, I'm well pleased. What I'm trying to show you is John the Baptist used water baptism as a way to identify the son of God. Because you just read the scripture. He said, for the one who told me uh, that the, when the spirit descends and remain, that is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. So John the Baptist uh, prepared the way because... He's the one who found the Son of God and identified him. And, and that scripture proves that uh, John um, used water baptism as a way to identify Jesus. He would immerse people underwater. If he didn't see the dove, he knew that person was not the Son of God. And he continued on. And then what happened when Jesus was baptized? It all happened. It said, scripture says, a dove came down, remained on him, and God himself told John the Baptist, this is my son. And that, that's, this is what you guys have to understand is, this is when water baptism ended because G G John preached, for I baptize with water, only him, but the one coming after me will baptize with the Holy Spirit. This is scripture and it's been misunderstood. 
So I have an actual question about these verses, Chris and Nate and Pastor Sam and whomever else. So Mary and Elizabeth were cousins, right? And they hung out? Yep. Okay. So then how, why didn't John recognize, like, I understand that they're second cousins, but if Mary and Elizabeth hung out long enough for Mary to stay at Elizabeth's house for her entire pregnancy, I'd assume they have a relationship. Like, why didn't John know or is this something that's for the benefit of the viewer? Like, what is going on between John and Jesus here? Well, John, didn't John stay in the wilderness until his day of revealing? Uh, when he said he didn't, I guess he didn't know. But you yeah, have to understand. Like, they grew up when, together. Yeah, they grew up together, right? So why yeah, why would yeah, he have sure. not? Because it kind of seems, it, it reads like it's are a Are you asking, thing. like, for baptized sake, or are you asking? No, for mine. For Okay, that, that so, I'm genuinely curious. Okay, so because yes, they grew up together. We know this. Like they knew each other. Like it's it's laid out in the Gospels that John and Jesus knew each other and you know were cousins. Um, you know, the, there's the whole scene where you know John is filled with the Spirit in the womb, and he kicks when you know Mary approaches being pregnant with Jesus. Like there's there's a whole bunch of stuff like. I mean, they are not complete strangers to each other, and he recognized him as the Lamb of God before the baptism. It literally says, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin no. of the world. And then the baptiz that baptism came came to... to no, because... Uh, well, wait a minute. Before, is... before we go back to baptize here, uh, in the John bore witness, I saw the Spirit descend on him after me. So he's describing to... He's answering the Pharisees' questions, and he's describing, there is a man, there is a man. And he's, like, describing Christ, right? I can't even untie his sandals. I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water. I saw the Spirit um, descend on him. It's like John is saying, is John saying that he saw the Spirit descend as a proof to the Pharisees? Because he would already have known that his cousin was the Messiah, right? Well, not necessarily. Like, he would have known that his cousin... Because, again, Jesus is not, he doesn't walk around going, yo, I'm the Messiah. He says, right. look at the works that I do. And Jesus hadn't started doing any works yet, right? So, like, John would not have known that he was the Messiah or the Christ. He would simply have known that Jesus was, you know, going to, at, at 30 years old, this is, you know, basically middle age, because people didn't live that long, you know, that he, he began to be an itinerant preacher, you know, and John already had an established ministry that and so this is why in Matthew 11 when John's disciples come to Jesus and are like you know John's in prison he knows he's gonna die I'm paraphrasing greatly here but he's John's in prison he knows he's gonna die he wants to know are you the one or should we wait for another and it's because you know G he wasn't around Jesus when Jesus was doing his work because he was out in the desert doing his own ministry um, and so Jesus is like yo I just he just recounts his works in Matthew 11 and lays out like, hey, the blind see, and you know, the cripples are healed, and you know, yada yada yada, right? So, and he said, go tell him that, and then they go and tell him that, and then Jesus lays out the rest of the discourse about John the Baptist in eleven eleven through fourteen, where he calls John the greatest man ever, or he calls him the greatest person ever born of woman, and uh, which is interesting for the Catholics. Um, uh, the point, the point is. Uh, Jesus and John Let me just finish with Steph real quick, okay? Because, like, you know, so she's, she genuinely wants to know about John the Baptist, not a fantasy. So so the the thing about John the Baptist is that he, he came, he did his, he baptized Jesus, um, you know, but that was not, like, he was to make the path straight for the Lord, Malachi, exactly what Brandon had talked about. So, like, that was his ministry, um, you could even make an argument that he went beyond the scope of his ministry when he went after Herod, um, and that's why he ended up in jail. So, I mean, there's there's all kinds of nuance to John the Baptist, and he, it's great. It also, by the way, says, you know, where it says, you're not Elijah, why are you baptizing in John? In Matthew, Jesus literally calls out John the Baptist as Elijah. He says, John is Elijah, verbatim. He says those words. So, like, you know, there you but go. But the point that I want to make is, John and Jesus, uh, yeah, he was his um, his uh, co cousin. But the point is, John did not know Jesus was the Son of God until he baptized Jesus. That's that, why. That's not that's what why, here. 
No, right? the point is, is John the Baptist, when he came up to Jesus, he goes, you must baptize me. And Jesus said, no, we must do this now to fulfill all righteousness. Because if John did not baptize Jesus, John would not have seen the dove and he could not complete his testimony. That's why Jesus refused to baptize John the Baptist, because John had to put him underwater so he would see the dove and then he would know that Jesus was the son of God. That was the whole reason for water baptism, because John said, I baptize with water, but the one coming after me will baptize with the Holy Spirit. And that's what we have to be concerned about today is make sure we're get baptized with the Holy Spirit. And that's the whole gospel. That is the so, gospel. So my question is, did you know that John was Jesus' direct cousin? Do you think that they spent 30 years on the planet and didn't interact with each other when their mothers interacted with each other? Is that what you're telling us? That's what we're supposed to believe, that they were cousins. Well, no, the, the question is, is why and that did he didn't know who his cousin was. was. That's, what, that's what you're telling us, right? Yes, I'm telling you that John the Baptist did not know Jesus was the Son of God until he baptized uh, Jesus. You have no biblical proof of that. We just read it in John right, 1, 31 to 34. You got zero you're, proof you're of that. ignoring the rest of the Gospels, dude. Like, John 1, 31, 34 tells us that God told John yeah. the Baptist, the one you yeah, see the Spirit right. descend and remain yeah, is the right. one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. Uh, Patrick. Patrick, yeah, we didn't get you more read that? In the other Gospels, that Jesus was literally walking up to John, and John recognized him immediately for who he is. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins right. of the world. He literally right. says he, this he as Jesus is walking he, up, not after his baptism. He recognized him because he was so close to him, just like when Mary and Elizabeth were together. They were make, infants. Make up and your they, mind. Were, they weren't even born yet. But make up uh, your mind. John. John asked Jesus to baptize him, wanting him to baptize him with the Holy Spirit. But Jesus said, no, we must do this now to fulfill righteousness because John had to baptize Jesus to see the dove. He had all right, all right, all right. Let's read another account of Jesus' baptism in Matthew 3. John the Baptist prepares the way, okay? I yeah, baptize Jesus you. Right. So, he, so he's talking to, the, so John is talking to the Pharisees again. So this is the same event, another account. I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who's coming after me is mightier than I. I whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather the wheat into the barn, but the chaff he will burn up with unquenchable fire. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to baptize him. John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? So the baptism has not occurred yet. And John is saying, I'm not worthy to untie his sandals, and you should be baptizing me, not the other way around. Right? So the baptism hasn't happened. But Jesus answered him, let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. And then John consented, and when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were open to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So, baptized, he knew. he, When Jesus was like, Yo, John, please baptize me, ba John was like, No way. I'm not worthy. So what was that about? Well, because, because of John 131 says, I did not know him. It says, I did not How know him. But the reconcile Matthew 3. When John said, right. I did not know him, it means he did not saying, know Jesus. Are you saying that, that the scripture is contradicting itself? Is that your position? No, the scripture doesn't contradict itself. Because Great. when you said I'm that. Glad. Now, you have, to, you have to reconcile what Steph just read with your claim that you're making on the text in John. If you're making a claim on the text in John, you're eisegeting all of this stuff into that text that it doesn't say. You're going to have to deal with the cross reference that she just read in Matthew 3. So, how do you reconcile your view that Jesus wasn't known by John with the view that is laid out in the scripture as we just read? Because uh, Steph just read 
that uh, John the Baptist told the, Pharise uh, the Pharisees that um, there's one who comes after me, but he didn't know who it was until he, he baptized him. Because he said, for that's, I baptize with water. That's literally not what the text says. That's literally a flat contradiction to what the text she read just said. Like, I don't think she needs to read it again. I just don't think you're able to hear it. Like, I think okay. that you are... I think that you are unable to hear or or even see and read the scripture in any way different than the conclusions that you've drawn. Um, I can prove it in 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 John five thirty one to thirty four. Jesus himself agreeing with what I Jesus himself yeah. is agreeing with what I said in John five thirty one to thirty four. Cool, cool, cool. But Nobody you still have to deal ever. with Matthew three that flatly contradicts your claim. What do you mean by, where does it contradict what I'm saying? Where does it contradict what I'm saying? Okay, so baptize. The account in John, one, okay, so I'm sorry, I skipped over to five. I'm trying to follow you along here, buddy. All right, mm -hmm. the account in John 1 sets up this way, right? And we'll just look at them back to back here. This is the testimony of John. He's talking to the Pharisees. He's describing what he's doing. Uh, where was it? 31. Then Jesus came toward him. So John answered, I baptize with water, but among you stands one who you do not know. Right? So there's acknowledgement. The baptism hasn't happened yet. One who you do not know. Even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie. These things took place at Bethany. The next day Jesus came towards him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And then he of whom I, this is he of whom I said after me, comes a man who's much better than me. I'm paraphrasing. I myself did not know him. But for this purpose, I came baptizing with water that he might be revealed to Israel. So is that what you're stuck on? You think that's literal that John is saying that he had absolutely no idea until the dove descended? That, yes, to know okay. that Jesus was the son of God. Okay, so Jesus then in Matthew 3, but in Matthew 3, we saw he already knew because he was protesting being the one to baptize him. He said, I don't want to baptize you. You are so much better than me. So... Since the Bible doesn't contradict, what else could John mean in 131? I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing. I saw the Spirit descend on him like a dove and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, he on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. So John is right. saying that he, what he's being told here is that this, the person who the, dove, the Spirit descends on, it's not a literal dove, right? The person who the Spirit descends on is a visual sign is the person who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. That's what was revealed to John. It's not saying anything about John coming to understand the Messiah or this or that. This is the person who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. So John is out baptizing and he's been told someone who the Spirit descends upon will be better at doing what you're doing than you are. And then this happens with Christ. And then the separate account in Matthew 3, we have additional information where John already knew something was up because he said, I can't baptize you. Then Jesus said, go ahead. Then John baptized him. He was persuaded. And then the spirit sat down. And then John was like, oh, this is the guy who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. All of this jives well together. But what you're drawing is that it has something to do with the revelation of Messiahhood, or it has something to do with like. I don't know. I'm, I'm having a hard time following you there because without that theory. Answer, you can answer it with scripture. John 1, 5, 31 to 34. Read that and you'll see Jesus' account of his baptism. John 5, 31. Da, da, da. When is it? Okay, so he's in the middle of talking. Jesus said to them, who's them? This is why the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him. Okay, so he's talking to the Pharisees, right? Truly I say to you, the son can do nothing of his own accord. Um, the hour is coming and now the hour is here where the dead will hear the voice of the son of God and those who hear will live. And then 30 says, I can do nothing on my own as I hear, I judge and my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of him who sent me 31. If I alone bear witness about myself, my testimony is not true. There is another who bears witness about me. And I know that the testimony that he bears about me is true. You sent to John and he has borne witness to the truth. Now that the testimony that I received is from him. Now, yeah, now that the testimony that I received is from him, but I say these things so that you might be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp, but you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. 
but the testimony that I have is greater than that of John. For the works that the Father has given me to accomplish, that the very works that I'm doing bear witness about me that the Father has sent me. I, I'm not seeing where the baptism is revisited. So what the, the point you have to understand is Jesus said, my testimony is not valid, but there's another who testifies in my favor. He's going back to when John baptized him. Because John was sent say to, that. He says John, John was sent testify. to testify and witness to the truth. And uh, through him, he's all not my saying belief, that baptized. He's saying what they're you just not read, going to listen. What you just read is, no, what is, she just is read, John's baptism were, with Jesus has baptized, something to do baptized. with our salvation. A, baptized. Wait, let me speak. If you listen, John's if baptism. You listen, if you listen, okay, go ahead and what answer the he question. just read, what, he, what she just read, states that Jesus couldn't tell them because they wouldn't believe him, but they would believe John. It doesn't right. say That's why Jesus anything came about what you're trying to state. It, he's literally telling them that, well, if you're not going to believe me, then go to John. Go to John the Baptist because you're going to believe him over me. That's what he's saying there. And that's why Jesus said, no one born of a woman is greater than John the Baptist because John the Baptist is the witness uh, that Jesus is the, the son of God. And uh, that's why it all happened. That's why the baptism is so important. But you have to understand, um, uh, Jesus, uh, John did not know Jesus was the son of God until he saw the dove, because that's when God told him, he, God told John the Baptist, this is my son, I'm well pleased. That, most of you guys probably never read these scriptures. And, and we will agree to disagree. Yeah, again, you, 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 you keep can making agree these to disagree. claims. You can agree to disagree, problem, but but what Steph read, Steph read that. Properly. Let me speak. Let me finish. When Steph, uh, oh, you've been read, doing speaking. St I know it. I'm I'm the one giving the study. Uh, <laughs> Steph read. Steph read. Didn't Steph? Didn't you not read that John? Um, testimony had something to do with our salvation because jesus said no. I, do not, I do not mention human or mention human testimony but i believe it because you'll be saved so you got to understand that has something to do with your salvation if you understand john the baptist first thing okay, okay so what 34 says is not the testimony that i receive is from man but i say these things so that you might be saved Right. So you'll be talking to us today, talking to us today. If you want to have salvation, you have to first understand John the Baptist. Because okay, John so the I, Baptist, I, hang on, wait, we got to take a pause. You, you said four verses quickly and it's been, what, about 20 minutes. So I just want to, is this where like, was it Michael who said, may the Lord rebuke you? Seems like, I don't know, that's, that may be appropriate. Uh, but anyways, uh, Michael, you've been patiently waiting through all of this. And I wanted to make sure I, I said hi I don't like about before. This room. You guys don't want to do any real, any real good stuff. Okay, thanks, yep. Baptize. Thanks. I, I need you to to make like the lions and shut thy mouth for a little bit. Like we we have been far far too generous to you uh, today. Um, anyways, Michael, Does that I want to make you sure Daniel? I. Can we make you Daniel? Uh, wait, how? Daniel didn't shut the mouth of the lions. God did. Well, God did, but like you know, you're the one in the midst of all the lions. Oh, actually, actually, all all of us was in the midst of the lions. Because are we all? Lions, we are all lions. Daniel. Okay. Anyways, Michael, I wanted to say hi before you got completely fed up with uh, this nonsense and left. Too late. Um, <laughs> what, 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 morning, everybody. What I was going to say is all this talk of baptism. Morning, if someone can make a quick trip up to Toronto and drown me. Um, <laughs> You can fly down here, and we can wade into the alligator lake, Lake Jessup, together. Let's baptize um, him EO style. It, it was it was just like it, it, it's hard, I, I, and I'm trying to be charitable, but I mean, this stuff like I see this stuff is totally made up, and I understand where you guys are coming from, and I, I think Nate, I think you had. Uh, or well, I'm not sure who said it, Chris, it might've been you who said that I, I don't think he has the capacity to see it without look like he, he can't remove his lens to look at the world the way kind of, Oh, I don't know. Everybody else does. Um, and so 
it, it's I think, and again, just you know my opinion. Um, like I mean, the horse is dead. Like you've beat it to death. Like it's <laughs> the, the carcass is. There's not even any blood left in the carcass anymore. <laughs> Uh, Michael, the Christian way to say that is the God of this world has blinded his eyes. Well, and, you know, well okay. <laughs> but, yeah, the dead horse and bloody carcass. Or, or just God has blinded his eyes, a la John's face. I mean, yeah, at this point, Steph, I, I don't know, Steph. Like, at this point, can you be like, you know what? Maybe God just did it. No, I, I think that's horrific. I reject it. Yeah, yeah. And, and you're not you're not going to convince Michael that God did anything. I don't think. Well, well, our job is not to convince anybody, so that's fine. Sorry, I missed that. What was that that got said a second ago? Uh, hey, Bob. Yeah, I said that. Uh, I don't. I didn't think Michael believed God did anything. I thought he was. You know, well, that. yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, precisely. How can something that doesn't exist do anything? Right, you, yeah. you're, you're right, Bob. Um, well, look, it, you do know that, that if Reformed Calvinists can do things, <laughs> certain things are possible. Well, well, yeah, I, I mean, I everything well, yeah. about this day. I'm, I'm sure that Chris has the capacity, to, you know, to like drive a car and, you know, push a wheelbarrow and do all kinds of stuff. Like, I'm sure he's capable of doing lots of things. Throw himself on elevator. I'm driving rates. a car right now. I'm there you go. One right now. It's amazing. Um, it, yeah. So anyway, uh, I I just kind of popped in this morning. Uh, I had a little bit of time. I, I decided to I decided to not work today. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, that was and it was yeah painful, unfortunately. Steph, hats off to you for being so unbelievably charitable. She's had a lot of practice from the conversations of today. This dude, Chris was like, I mean, Chris was like, angels were singing. Like I have never seen Chris display such charitability. You know what? That's that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, there was that one point where where Chris was probably the most. I was waiting, like I was counting in my head for him to say, "Shut up and read a book," and it never came. (laughs) So, um, I yeah, I guess I have to kind of tip my hat to that dude. Well, well, technically I mean, he did. He was just very nice about it. He said that baptized is wildly uneducated, and I almost said something, but <laughs> he said it so nicely that I figure any improvement is acceptable at this point, so I went with it. Wait, did I say wildly uneducated? Well, I'm rewarded. It would have been wildly accurate. What he said. Bob, I could only hope to attain your level of education at some point, so I'm, I'm, I'm praying that I will someday. Well, if you'll just spend a little bit more time with me, you'll get there quicker. But uh, just feel the shiver up your spine. But <laughs> wait, I have an ethical quandary for Chris. Well, uh, let me get you Chris. Good. Okay. Okay, yeah. are you ready? And I kind of want to hear what everyone in the room thinks on this. Uh, have you or will you subscribe to Bob's YouTube channel so he can go live? Well, tell him the ethical part. So the, the reason for wait, the question. Am I preventing? That's Bob it. From That's the whole live? thing. So if Bob gets 40 subscri- or 50 subscribers, he can go live. He was at 32 the other day. Uh, do you? I may be hiring it today. I don't know. Is it morally acceptable <laughs> to contribute and subscribe to Bob's channel, or is it immoral? I mean, the thing about it is, like, you know, again, a good determinist. I would say that Bob and his preaching is not going to affect anyone's eternal salvation one way or the other. And generally, we talk about that is not true. You have got it so wrong. I know, Bob. But anyway, so what I would say is, like, generally with free speech, we say the best way to show someone's position is crazy is to just shut up and let them talk. So maybe it would be a good thing to let Bob go live all the time. Maybe he can have Dale Tuggy on his show. We do. I, I would actually go. See? I would actually go a step further. I would say that from a comedic perspective, it's a moral imperative. Yeah, it's it's getting. To I that hold point. to both yeah, of those. In positions. fact, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got it. I got an idea. There could be Bob. You could do a whole YouTube show where you do a Zoom call with Baptized and Yaju, and you guys could do the whole like. You guys could do the whole thing on your podcast or your whatever it is YouTube cast. 
where it's the three of you guys fighting it out for like a couple of hours. I, I think you would get, I think it would go viral. I think you guys would get tens of thousands of subscribers. Hey, Bob, my, uh, in my bio is an email address. Send me an email. I'd love to have you on the podcast. Oh my gosh. Now, oh, if you do that, my... Michael, you have yeah. to have a very well formulated caveat, like an introduction stating that this is not, this man does not speak for Christianity. Well, you... so, I mean, well, I mean, you talking about? You talking about? Well, no, you talking well, about well, no, no, but the reality is, the... I mean, we've had Kent Hovind on, and I mean, I didn't have to do a massive caveat for him. That's and he's better. crazy. And he's not crazy as much. That improvement. So, um, but, I, but yeah, well, yeah, you know what, Steph, actually, well, uh, okay, so here's an offer, Steph. Um, I'll, I'll have you on first just to do a small little audio snippet of like a bumper, and you, you can give the caveat. <laughs> How's that? The opinions and thoughts of this man do not officially <laughs> reflect <laughs> the, the global community of Christianity or sane people as a whole. But that, you could just clip that right there. Well, I have to right. say, if we we're if we we're collection collecting like heretical action figures, I, I mean, I would, man, I, I would say, Bob, you've grown on me. I don't know if it's like a like in a cancerous way, but I, I like you, Bob. Um, and baptized, you know, you're okay as a person, but but sometimes you you get a little too ramped up when when we're not just accepting what you say we we need to understand and what we have to understand, and when we're not taking the bait, and we're just like, no, bro, we're not buying it. You, you do get a little kind of cranky with us. Um, but Bob, I appreciate you, even though I disagree with pretty much everything you say about Jesus. Well, but look, you do know that Elijah had to come first, and Jesus said that John was Elijah, if you care to accept it. But he was the one that came and started preaching. That. You're not wrong, Bob. For once, you are not wrong. That is totally correct. And and he started preaching, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And after he baptized Jesus, and Jesus went and spent a little time out there not eating at all in the wilderness, uh, Jesus came out, you know, preaching, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And, and that's the same thing I do. And I'm sure that people can get saved if they believe the truth. I'm not sure about that other stuff. Well, then, Bob, what I have to do here is I have to sweeten the pot. Okay. Here, so here's my pitch. Um, we, we just have this little bitty podcast, Bob, but we get regular downloads from 107 countries. So if you want to reach a wide audience, I'm your ticket. Most of them who want to remove Michael's head from his body. <laughs> no, only about six. Oh. Because we actually did. It's actually funny. Nate, hey, it's funny you, funny got, you said that. You got, you, got more, you got more hits than Nate. I mean, I thought I was getting on top of the line just getting on Nate's broadcast. So, okay, nah. so, I mean, it, well, I mean, it, it all depends. It, it all depends, right? I mean, it, I, 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 don't, I don't like to, to draw, you know, comparisons. I don't, I don't, I have no idea how far, actually, I've seen, actually, Nate, you've got quite a few subscribers. I just tell so, myself it's because the world loves darkness more than light. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just... So, I mean, it, it, it would be, it would be interesting. Like, I don't know if you ever look at the analytics to see how many, mm -hmm. how many views you've actually had. Uh, of all of your videos combined, that would be something interesting to look at. Oh, you know, I don't know how to do that. Maybe I could figure it out if there's a tool. But yeah, I, I got a ton of subscribers when I was doing my music stuff. And then I started talking about Jesus and like everyone stopped watching. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, so, it's a... Uh, hey. yeah. no, 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 you go, Chris, you go. I'm just wondering if you've got that many subscribers. Have I have I developed a uh, fan club or a hate club yet? No, Am I, I? Love, no, I love you, Chris. I mean, I, I want to get live on, you know, my Bob the Builder channel, and where I can share I, I the love link. You too, Bob. And you I'll can come on your channel if you want. That's, I, fine. that's what I that's what I'm wanting to do. I got to get to where I can go live and get you on the channel, and uh, and I'll get you. Uh, we, I mean, we'll talk about it there, and anybody else that wants to come on, Michael can come on. I mean, I'm, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I mean, I, I like to show up Calvinist, you know. We, well, we we get we get a considerable amount of, um, well, I won't call it I won't call it hate mail. I'll, I'll call it um, 
I'll call it Christian love mail. Um, <laughs> and it's uh, it, like, it's, it's surprising. I would say probably a solid 20% of our regular listeners are believers. Like Bob believers or real believers? Um, I, I don't know. Just kidding, sorry, Bob. I, I mean, like, there, so there's, so there's, uh, there's, uh, there's one guy who came on. Uh, he came on the podcast oh years ago. Well, we've been doing it for about six years now. He came on about four and a half years ago. His name's Chad. And every once in a while, Dean and I will, will give, kind of give a shout out and say, "Hey, Chad," because we know that he listens to every episode because we won't have him back on. Um, so he just like it, you know, it's like. Um, you know, it's like uh, like hate sex, right? You know, it's 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 that kind of thing where he where he listens, where he likes, you know, like punishing himself. I think, um, but uh, yeah. So we, we we get regular mail from people always telling me, you know, uh, you know, repent and believe, all these like all kinds of different stuff. Um, so yeah, Bob, like I'm telling you, Bob, if you want to reach a, a big audience, I am your ticket. Well, I'm not exactly interested in meeting a big audience, but if I could, I mean, for if you would become a believer in what you don't believe in, I mean, that'd be a pretty good show, wouldn't it? Know how I know well, Bob has the wrong gospel, and atheist is promoting him. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 don't promote me now. Don't promote me. Do not promote us now. I tell you, there's been, you know, we've had, so I mean, so there's Kent Hovind who, you know, he was on probably about four years ago. Um, a big-time Calvinist, Saitan Brugenkate, was on. Um, so, I mean, we, we've, had, uh, we've had a lot of... Uh, oh, I can't remember his name now. Um, we, we, but we've had, a lot of, we've had a lot of believers. So, hey, I'm telling you. Go into you my might, bio. You go might have my email. Skaterrogers.com. Send me an email. So, so, Michael, maybe you can bridge a gap for us because... Uh, James White would love to debate Bart Ehrman again after he annihilated Bart Ehrman from space the first time. Um, and uh, Bart Ehrman has stated that he will only debate James White again if if James White will come up with a hundred grand. And so if you can get Bart to agree to debate James White on your show, that would be quite the uh, feather in your cap. So... So funny enough, uh, so we, you all know uh, Dr. Josh, right? So Josh's wife, Megan, is actually the producer for Bart Ehrman's podcast. Um, and we, we've chatted, and like, and I've spoken to Megan about the possibility of having Bart on, but he's just so crazy busy with his own stuff. Um, so it's not out of the realm of possibility that he'll be on. Um, I mean, we've had Lawrence Krauss on as well, so I mean, we've had some, some certainly some big names on. But... It's, uh, yeah, so Nate, I'm just going to do a whole commercial here on your show, on your show. Uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I could certainly drop the, uh, drop the note. I, I don't know. So w when, w when did this other debate take place and can I see it somewhere? Uh, yeah, it's on, it's online. It's, uh, about nine years ago. Oh, and, wow. Okay. Uh, it's on, it's on James White's channel, but it's also, so Ehrman put it on his channel, but it took him seven years to put it up there. And he basically said this was not his finest hour. He did get trounced, um, and and essentially, Herman admitted that he had done zero research before debating James White, who's done like six hundred moderated debates. Like James White debates all the time, and Bart Herman just kind of strolled in there and was like, "Yeah, this will be no problem. It's just some other fundy," and just I mean, it was obvious. Well, it's interesting. I mean, like, I mean, debating is uh, like, de quote unquote, debating is a is a very specific skill. Like, I'll have a conversation with pretty much anybody, but I don't like to debate, right? I, I think that they're largely just rhetorical devices. I think that people that watch debates, the overwhelming, the overwhelming majority have gone in with their preconceived notions and probably aren't even willing to change their mind. So if you, I think if you frame it in, in the, in the, sense of trying to have a discussion with someone it then the other thing that it does is it takes down the adversarial nature right because in a debate you have an opponent and i have to quote unquote beat my opponent whereas if you just talk to somebody then i have found it more likely that the defenses are going to come down and you can oftentimes not necessarily have a like a have agreement on things but it's not so point for point haha i won kind of thing if that makes sense 
it's like when we talk, like I completely agree. Like I, I, I hate debates. I hate the formality just because generally I want to rage against the machine, <laughs> but I, I just don't like the formality and all the like minding your P's and Q's and you get 1.5 minutes and the other guy gets 1.5. Like I, I just hate that stuff. Um, I like to have a casual conversation and, you know, have a little more free flowing dialogue. Just like, I mean, everything you said, I, uh, I completely agree without caveat, as you would say. Well, I hate when, like, when you're having, like, you know, a good conversation, and then, like, people are, like, pretending, you know, like, and it's a good conversation, but then, like, people become, like, just unnecessarily aggressive, and it's like, wait a minute, we're, we're having a good conversation, then it's like, somebody come in, and, like, they just make it very disrespectful, and it's like, no, let's just set up a debate. <laughs> Well, and that's the thing, right? Like you have to be – you have to go into it honestly as a good faith agent, right? And there are lots of good faith agents on this app and elsewhere, and there are lots of bad faith agents on this app and elsewhere. Like uh, Nate, our friend who shall not be named, right? <laughs> he is not – like he's not a stupid man. He's not a stupid man, but he is the he is the biggest – bad faith agent I've ever encountered in my life. Be, you know, so anyway, it doesn't matter who it is, but, but yes, I, I agree with you, Brandon. Like you have to, like you have to go into it as a good faith agent, be willing to um, listen as well as talk and not just pretend to listen and just be waiting for your turn to talk. Um, and, and, and yeah, so I completely agree with that. Yeah, I'm, I'm just not used to being cursed at uh, so much by Christians. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, our friend is a little bit of a unique case. Didn't you say that, that that's one of the only people you have actually blocked? Yeah, I, I, I mean, there's tons of block too. Like, you, you know, I mean, for like just coming in with like porn images and yelling and screaming. So, I mean, uh, those don't count. I've got lots of them blocked. But I mean, for actual people who like have irreconcilable differences, um, who I just can't be on the same stage with, yeah, there's probably less than like probably a six or seven now. It used to be like three, but now it's Ooh. probably like six or seven. And, and I mean, again, I mean that that's almost the category is the first one. That's like not differences. It's just like I can't because he he just like went crazy on a curse laden tirade when we had um, the messenger ability still. And it was like beeping like constantly, like the guy was going haywire. And I'm like, dude, I can't do my, I, I can't host my room because my messages won't stop beeping with your curse laden ty like tirades. I'm like, you've got to stop. Please stop, or I will have to block you. It didn't stop. So I'm like, all right, dude, I guess I got to block you. Like, I mean, I, I can't function on this app because you're cursing so frequently. It's just like beep, 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 beep. I'm like, message, message, message. Oh, he's saying F off. Oh, he's found a unique way to say F off. Oh, like I can't handle this, bro. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Good times. Was the what was it? Oh, man, what was the Chris, who was that in your picture? Good times. Was the greatest times. Was the best of times. Was the Chumbawamba song. I believe that was Chumbawamba. Yeah. One hit wonder. Are they Canadian? Um, I don't know. I have a friend who very oddly Chumbawamba is one of his favorite bands. He has all their albums. Apparently they have multiple albums. So they only have a one hit wonder, but he likes more than one of their wonders. Yeah. Yeah. He likes all of their music and is a, is a ravenous proselytizer of their music. I mean, I really like that one song. I don't know of any others, yeah. but I like that song. I don't know, man. It's weird. You know? Um, <laughs> so he, he also likes bare naked ladies a lot more than most people. So I, I don't, yeah, I, I wouldn't say I like them more than most people, but I do enjoy them. Yeah. They're great. Yeah. Canadian band. Ah, yeah. All those Canadian bands. Rush is a Canadian band too. So wear that one around your neck. Oh, well, yeah. Um, Rush, is, Rush is hot garbage. Um, <laughs> I, I agree with well, you, Michael. I, I will say that. I will say this. Okay. Um, okay. I, I, I will revise my previous statement. Getty Lee is hot garbage. He can't sing to save his life. Um, every, every like Neil Pert, the drummer who could do no wrong, um, obviously wouldn't be in that category. Um, but yeah, but if uh, Rush would have been amazing if they had someone who was good at vocals. The heck is wrong with this man? He hadn't found Jesus. 
Get him I saved, and he'll start liking Rush. Not even Jesus could make me like Diddy Lee. Well, wait, I don't like Rush either, so maybe I retract my statement. Travis, <laughs> both of you. I only sing the Psalms, Steph. Oh. What? I only sing the Psalms. Oh, well, you know. I'm just kidding, that. I don't. I, I'm very opposite of that. How does one drum to the Psalms on a modern drum kit, Nate? I'm just curious. I'm sure Bubby would give a very complicated 20 minute long technical answer. I'm going to say, put some on, let me feel it out for a minute, and I'll tell you. So, by feel and intuition, or as led by the Holy Spirit. I, oh, I, you know, it's, it's, oh, here's the well, deal. It's kind of like, oh, oh, hey, oh, sorry, I'm about to lose my thought. It's like that, um, is it Shane and Shane that, that specifically, like, that they did the Psalms from, like, uh, was it Psalms 38? So, I mean, I guess they, they technically, like, added some, like, lyric to it uh, that would not be straight psalms. But, I mean, you know, there, there are people who have actually made modern music to um, large swaths of quotations of the psalms. So, you know, they'll, they'll add music. They may add, like, some different effects and things like that. But it is very possible. Check that out. It's like, I think it's like psalm. They have a couple songs called psalms. I think, like, Psalm 64, Psalms 38. I think it's Psalms 38. If that's what I'm thinking of by Shane and Shane, like that's a catchy tune and it uses large quotes of the Psalms in it. I believe it's been a while since I heard it. That's my answer, Steph. Okay. Here's a question for you. I ran across somebody recently that was talking about the evils of, I'm probably going to say this wrong. Syncopated rhythms. <laughs> what, what I, and, and, I, I he started kind of explaining it to me, and then it was just so weird. I just kind of clued out. So, can you tell me what it's about? Um, I mean, I have an idea. He would because I've heard that before. I mean, I don't know exactly where your guy was going, but I think it's going to have something to do like if you drum in certain rhythms or certain times or whatever, it, it, it's like antiquated to like some sort of like pagan rituals or i don't know it's like how you would have like evil sounding drumming right like or or if you have like minor keys on an instrument it'd be like you know if you pay, play an a it's like oh that's it's like it's like that's happy but if it's like a minor it's like Aah. it's like ooh, it sounds evil so like syncopated drumming would be kind of like tribalistic drumming if you've heard of like sepul sepultura like that would be an example how it's just like like very kind of aggressive like like that type of i guess evil drumming Versus like the little drummer boy where it's like, bum, 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 bum. it's like, wow, nothing evil about that. I have a feeling that's something, that's something about what he was going to say. I think Pastor Mark made a comment about that one time too, about syncopated drumming. Yeah, I just found it really, it, it was, I, I wasn't really part of the conversation. It was, I was kind of on the periphery of the conversation and it was brought up and I just, I was just like, I, what? Um, and then I, I quickly lost interest and just tuned out. But yeah, okay, interesting. Drums aren't evil. I'll just say that. Yeah, I, I agree. I, yeah, It's just like we were talking about before with D&D. &D. Like, D&D &D in itself is not inherently evil. Unless you met the guy I met last night. Oh. Do no, talk. don't. Oh, God, no. I oh. will not. If you can coax Steph or Chris or anyone else that's born through it twice, um, I will let them, but I will I will spare the room. If you See if you can coax Steph into doing it. He met a dude who's attracted to his dog, okay? Oh, okay. All right. That's a, that's a good Cole's notes. Oh, sorry. Uh, you call it cliff notes. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah. That's a, yeah, that's a good, uh, synopsis. That's weird. Wait, <laughs> that, you that should ask thing? Michael about it though, because I gave my Michael, listen, yeah. are bestiality and autism inherently related? No, in no way, shape or form. Thank you. And, and um, so, so the, like, I mean the, the more like, you know, academic way, cause I, I get how it can, how it can sound like, cause on, on the surface, you know, someone would be like, of course not. That's ridiculous. But I, I guess, like, I was, because this guy also said he's autistic. And, like, I, I mean, we just met him, but I believe him. Uh, anyway, but he was saying, like, he has a hard time separating, like, his attraction to humans because of his dog. Because it's such a fine specimen of a dog. It's like a show dog and all this stuff. And he's like, but it's a girl dog. I'm like, stop saying that. Um, but he, he says he has a hard time, like separating it because it's still like a beautiful animal, but
but he equates that beautifulness with like sexual attraction anyway so like on its surface it's like no of course not that's ridiculous but is there anything of of one or the other or, or take any anything right like but but is there anything like um if is a byproduct of autism maybe like kind of like Steph was throwing around um you know like maybe like you would obsess on thoughts more or you would focus on one thing more and then if you know you have a dog that fits these markers then it's not autism. It's not because you're autistic that makes you do this, but it's kind of like one of the looser webs of it or looser, looser strings. It's like gets you to focus on things more than you should. And instead of focusing on like building blocks to, you know, to please your aesthetics in an order, you focus on this dog thing. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm not saying like is autism related to yeah, dog yeah, attraction. Yeah. I, I, but, I, totally yeah. Get what you're, I totally get what you're saying. And hyper focus can be, um, can be a byproduct of being on the spectrum for sure. Um, but I mean, something like bestiality would be noted as a sexual dysfunction, whereas autism is a neurological dysfunction, right? So they're, they're completely different. Um, and, and yes, there can be comorbidity between, um, mental health disorders. Um, that would be, uh, I'd be curious to see, a, like if this person, you know, was, you know, in the care of a mental health you know, professional, I'd be I'd be interested to read the file. Yeah, that's what I said. Needless to say, we will be looking for a new player, Michael. Do you do you do roll twenty? Yes, we do. Oh, interesting. Bro. Okay. I just oh, here we go. To a client, get this. Rolled into a client. They have been had a printer in their kitchen down for a full week. Everybody's tried everything. Uh, yeah, we tried everything. We've tried, <laughs> plugged all the stuff in. Bro, you reset went it? right up to it, plugged it in, said test it. It works right away. It literally <laughs> took me less than one minute to do this job, and I am going to bill them two hundred and fifty dollars. Do you even feel bad for not like tinkering with it like ten minutes and and like pulling out some wires to like make it seem like they're not just burning money? Not at all. <laughs> so, um, who was it? James McNeil Whistler, or was it um, a sergeant? Anyway, one of these famous American painters was being paid a gajillion dollars. It was either Whistler or Sargent. I can't remember which one. Was being paid a ton of money to do portraits. Uh, I think it was Sargent. But anyway, his portrait style was very quick, and he was making very accurate marks very quickly, and he's coming out with these gorgeous paintings that up close look very messy, and then far away it coalesces into this very fleshy, lifelike, beautiful painting, right? And so one of his more wealthy patrons famously asked him, why am I paying you so much money when you can, it only takes you like two hours to make this portrait? And he said, because you're paying me for the 30 years that it took for me to learn how to do it this quickly. So there you go. Yes, that's what a plumber once told me when I um, was not being that guy. But I was presenting a hypothetical scenario about a guy like that. And they said something similar. I'm like, man, I, I wish I could do that. Like, that's crazy. Like, I've been messing with this leaky sink for like, you know, two days. And you're here like two minutes. And I'm like, man, I can see how some people, totally not me, would be like, what the heck is going on with that? He's like, yeah, well, you know, you could, you could tell that person. I think I, maybe I said friend because I'm not the only one that thinks that way. But uh, he's like, you know, you're not paying for the two minutes I was here. You're paying for the like, you know, 15 years or whatever, I've been doing it, doing this for experience so I can get it done in only two minutes. I'm like, that's a good point. I'm a jerk. Yeah, he stole that from Sergeant. Yeah, there's lots of variations on this theme. Like, uh, do you know who James Carville is? He's a, he's a dumb The Rage and Cajun? Show. Cannot stand that. The Rage predator and Cajun. Alien that is guy. correct. You, Nate, you finally knew Somebody who that I was referencing. This is so great. But he's not a, a he's day. not a theologian. He's a politician <laughs> or political okay, science yeah. guy. <laughs> so anyway, so James Carville got so t tells this story about Bill Clinton. So the Monica Lewinsky thing happens, right? And um, you know, he calls up James Carville and he's like, "James, what are we gonna do?" And you know, James is like oh, this is easy. And he gives him like, you know, a five minute thing and types it out and sends it to him. And Clinton's like, okay, great. And he does it. 
And then the next thing that he does is he sends him an invoice for $75,000. And Bill Clinton's like, wait, what? It took you five minutes. And he was like, yeah, well, five minutes is, uh, you know, whatever, hourly. And then he's like, for knowing the exact right thing to say, seventy. dollars Four thousand nine hundred ninety-five dollars. <laughs> that may be the only thing he said that I'm like, that's great. Bob, do you know the region Cajun? He's got to be from your region. Okay, well, fine. Now we lost Bob. Hey, anyway, guys, I gotta go. Uh, chat next week, I guess. All Take right. care, Michael. Always happy, good to see happy you. Happy Friday, my friend. Oh yeah, same to you guys. Cheers. I am very excited to send this invoice now. It's going to be a really fun day. <laughs> Brothers, as much as possible, <laughs> as much as depends on you, live at peace with all people. Yeah. You know how I live at peace with people is they stop calling me <laughs> to fix stupid crap. And then, then like, then they're like, oh, wait a minute. Maybe we should take pictures of everything where it's plugged in instead of, you know, and, and maybe post a picture and laminate it and leave it right next to the jacks where people start monkeying with things. The restaurants are the worst. Like people will <laughs> roll into restaurants and think that they know how to fix something and they'll just start unplugging stuff. Like I had one lady completely, like there was like 20 cables plugged into this network and it was all real specific on VLANs and all this other stuff. And she literally just went into the office and unplugged every single cable in the office, thinking somehow that was going to fix her problem. I was like, <laughs> in what world does unplugging everything make things work better? Like, what are you doing? Well, hey, apparently they... Caught the main shooting guy. Oh, they did. Okay. Did he put up a fight or did they just arrest him? I don't know. I just see the headlines now. Hmm. Maine is very close to upstate New York. It's not good. Wait, did they arrest did... him at Steph's house? Are you harboring fugitives again, Steph? Are you oh, guys good. talking She's to me? There. Sorry, I'm talking to my nanny. What's going on? What? We were asking if the main shooter was hiding out at your house and the FBI just came and got him. Oh, not that I know. No. <laughs> not that I know. It sounds like something a guilty person would say. I didn't know he was in the basement in my giant cistern. I didn't know. In my, did you say my giant cistern? Yes. I do have a giant cistern in my basement. I know. What? That's why I said it. <laughs> Why? Okay, wait a minute. Wait. A minute. wait she doesn't Why remember when a... she told. She doesn't remember when she told us this. But Steph, if I said right now, God told me that. That's how I know. Would you be like, whoa? Um. No, I would assume that you done. had some education on old house things, but that is that could be a faith problem with me because I never assume miracle <laughs> first. <laughs> no, that's called a reason. That's called a reason advantage. Okay, I like that better than faith problem. So I'm right, go it's a that. reason advantage, not a faith problem. I mean, like, faith problem would be like, I don't believe the word, you know, the Bible is the word of God, even against, over and against all rational evidence. That would be a faith problem. All right, my friends, I have to go. Would you like to stay and keep Chris company all on his drive home, anyone? Ooh. I, I do have a 20 have minute drive home. Oh, it's only 20? I thought you were driving for a while. Oh, no, no, no. I'm, I will be in Tampa soon, though, because I do have to go out to a different restaurant and install something for them. So I will, um, you know, I know that's not near you, but it's near enough that we can meet halfway. Sure. Let me know when you uh, get out here. But in the meantime, you guys yeah. uh, keep Chris company, and I'll, I'll see you all oh, next fine. week, I guess. Bye, Nate. Carry on. <laughs> see you. Let's see. Okay, so let's start the clock. It's 1046 a.m.